So hey guys. Welcome back to my channel. This is part 1. What if Naruto became the great red dragon god emperor in high school DXD? And he also got harem with some women too. But before I start, you guys have to use thousand year of death jutsu on the like and subscribe button until they change their color. And hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss the next part. Do check out my playlist. And check out the description box for the next part. Now, let's start the story. Prologue. The dimensional gap, where neither humans nor the supernatural could survive, where great red, true red dragon god emperor freely fly and live, but today is a different situation. He is in pain, after the battle against various entities and infinite dragon god, office, he is starting to radiate too much power even higher than the two heavenly dragons combined. Suddenly an idea gets stuck in his mind. Why not create a child? A son who inherited his power, legacy also a dragon god since he will be the father of the son. He was alone from the beginning of course, office came, but only to fight and try to kick him out or to kill him, he have no family. Sometimes he thought about how it feels to have a family. Now he has a chance to have one, of course it's just his son, but son no less. The large red dragon roared in pain and excitement as its body was enveloped in a crimson sheet of pure vast godly energy aura. He also tried to add as much energy as he can. The aura then began to build into a baby boy. The boy has crimson hair. His eyes were closed then he opened his eyes, his eyes were ghoul just like his father, his facial experts calm yet destructive and very dominating. When the boy saw his father he just smiled and tried to touch him which greatly astonished his father. It is the first time someone is trying to show affection towards him. He wants to feel it more. And he already knows what to do. The great red suddenly changed his size dot, now he is in his human form just to hold his hatching in his arms. Hey there my little dragon god, said the father with a fatherly smile, and released his little aura to make his little hatching more comfortable, and make him warm. The boy just tried to cuddle him. And that brought a smile on his father's face. Well, my hatching, it's time to give you a name how about Naruto. Naruto. I'll call you Naruto. How's that sound my hatching? Said asked Great Red. To his surprise the boy released his power that is pure crimson a little bit different from his father, but a part of red no less. I see you like the name don't you said Great Red, while patting his hatching still in his human form. Suddenly a realization hit him that he could not leave the dimensional gap for a long period of time, and also could not give his son the love of a mother and full family affection. Surely he loves and cares about him above all, but he also wanted to give his son the love of a complete family. Then he was starting to find an ideal foster family for his son. First he checked supernatural beings, and then found that they would have turned his son just a weapon without any emotion. He rejected the idea at that moment without giving any thought. Then he looked at humans and, surely they were weak, but when come to love, affection, family bonding they were the best. So it's final that he would send his son to the human world for his childhood, while keeping an eye on him from the dimensional gap. But he could not just send his hatching, newly born son, without a gift and a good family. So he first started to find a good family for his son. Yuzumaki Household. Mr. Yuzumaki may be the owner of the Yuzumaki Corporation, but today the news doctor told him totally broke him. Flashback begin. Mr. Yuzumaki? Asked a doctor to a brown hair man. Why dot yes doctor is my wife all right? She brought here an hour ago asked a nervous man Mr. Yuzumaki. Well, I have bad news for you you see your wife's condition is pretty bad dot, also she had a miscarriage. And her internal origin was damaged too. So I think she could not have child at its own said doctor making a sad expressions with showing sympathy. Just by hearing it broke his heart but he couldn't leave his wife he loved her no, he loved her dearly. Can I meet my wife doctor asked Mr. Yuzumaki. Flashback ends. He entered the room where his wife was, his crimson hair. Tears running through her face. Just seeing her in that situation breaks his heart more. Hey, honey. Are you okay? Asked Mr. Yuzumaki. How could I kin? I cannot become a mother. How could I be okay? Sobbed Mrs. Yuzumaki hugging her husband. Shhhh Hitomi we can adopt a child and raise him as ours you know, said Kin while hugging his wife tighter and planting a kiss on her forehead. Hitomi just smiled and nodded, that's all what Kin needed. The dimensional gap. The Great Red saw the whole incident and couldn't help but pity that family and decide to give his son to Yuzumaki so that his son has a good childhood. Now he have to give his son a birth gift. After thinking a lot, what would be better to give his son the boosted gear? Now he started to look for it, and he found out soon just his current host about to pass away and boosted the gear switch. He forcefully blocked it the whole process of switching host, and took boosted gear from the current host, under his wing also healing and wiping the memory about the boosted gear from the host. Looks like your gift arrived my son said Great Red to which little issue just yawned cutely. One day later. Human Realm. 
We could see Kai and Hitomi at shrine praying. When they just about to leave, the Yuzumaki couple paused in their steps as they heard something strange. Ah dot dot h h h h h, you hear ya. The Yuzumaki couple saw an infant crying on the floor. The baby Kai said with a thunderstruck look on his face. Something inside of Hitomi was immediately attracted to the small baby boy as she made her way towards him. Hitomi walked closer to the infant and her brown eyes softened. A baby with crimson hair struggling to lift himself off the floor while looking towards her, the infant has crimson hair just like her. But also have golden eyes like her husband. The perfect child that she dreamt about having one with her crimson hair color and her husband's golden eyes. She gently picked up the baby. Then starting to look the baby more closely. The infant was absolutely adorable and so pure. Did someone leave him here? Said a curious husband at his wife behavior. Whatever he is, we can't let the baby stay here Hitomi said as she wrapped the baby in her kimono. Even though this wasn't her true child, she felt a strong emotional connection with the baby. I walked over to look at the baby and he rubbed his head in puzzlement. It's strange. He looks like he could be our son, Hitomi said Kai. The Yuzumaki couple looked around the shrine in hope of trying to find who the infant belonged to. But as they looked around more, they didn't find anyone in sight. The couple sighed as she looked back at the baby. Someone left him here. Should we take him home with us? asked Hitomi nervously. I tilted his head and he looked closer at the infant. Well, it's like I said. He looks just like us. That's strange. The Yuzumakis looked at each other and then they looked back the infant. What should we name him? Kai asked. Eyes. We'll call him Naruto. Said Hitomi. I nodded again. Dot. Hitomi smiled warmly at the newly named infant and she couldn't stop herself and softly touched the baby's cheek, increasing her maternal feelings towards Naruto. Naruto, who was immensely enjoying the warmth, slowly opened his eyes and looked into the eyes of his mother, making Hitomi giggle at her sachi curious eyes. I didn't expect to have a child of my own Hitomi thought, as her brown eyes were looking into Naruto's own golden eyes. If I'm going to be a mother, I should at least try to be the best at it. Hitomi thought as she saw her baby yawn and nestle himself in her neck. She completely lost the will to be a mother after the incident. She was completely heartbroken even after her husband mentioned or suggested to adopt a baby she didn't know how to feel about it. But now having a baby in her arms was making her heart in pure bliss. She was so lost in her thoughts that she was completely missing the smiling face of her husband. Hmm. That's right. My cute little Misachi. You know honey, it does suit you Kai said with a small smile as he saw the happy smile on Hitomi's face when she looked at the sleeping baby in her arms. The dimensional gap. Great Red watched the whole scene and couldn't help and chuckled, happy for his son's future. Good luck son. Have a happy childhood. I promise I'll be always there if you need me my son promised Great Red while turning back to his dragon form. Chapter 1. Family Awakening, Truth and Office. One year later. It's been a year since little Naruto was adopted into the Yuzumaki family. Mr. Yuzumaki couldn't believe it and wondered how happy and cheerful their house became after Naruto introduced them to their life. He could simply say his son now won the irreplaceable person in their life. Little Naruto was currently in his mother's arms, happily playing with his mother's crimson hair dot, he loves to play with it and to which his mother didn't mind. Why would she? Actually she loved it. And why wouldn't she? She took it as Naruto is showing his affection towards her. To her, her little Naruto has everything that she wanted in her child. But above all, the maternal feeling she developed for Naruto was completely different from the first time she held her Sachi. The Tomi always wanted to be a mother, but some circumstances always get the better of her. She had completely given up the hope of having a baby until they found Naruto at the shrine, no less. According to her household servants, Kamisama herself blessed them with the child. Which even she can't disagree with after all, she indeed found her Sachi at the shrine. Then the crimson hair of her Sachi matches her own. No doubt everyone thinks that he is her son and she intended to keep it that way. And the golden eyes of Naruto match with her husband, much to her delight. Anyone who didn't know about Naruto's origin will think Naruto is her and Kai's son a son they always wanted. Just one year has passed, and little Naruto has already become the apple of her eyes. Naruto completes her little family, her little perfect family. She didn't want to think about it if Naruto didn't come into their life. Whenever she saw sleeping face of her little Sachi, she always made a small prayer to Kami for granting such a little bundle of joy in their life. I didn't know he'll start caring for Naruto this much. At first, he agreed immediately to adopt Naruto when he first saw how Naruto made a depressed Hitomi back to her original self, not to mention her wife became more cheerful, motherly self day by day. It looks like, little Naruto took away the saddened part of Hitomi completely and gave her the happiness she always wanted. And as the time went on, he became closer and closer to his son. 
Little Naruto loved the color of crimson, his own color of hair is crimson. Currently his mother was busy to get dressed as little Naruto. Today was his birthday after all. Since the day a remind of them, how they met Fire Bundle of Joy. And when they called their family doctor to check Naruto just after bringing him to their house, the doctor told them that Naruto is just some hours old, Kai declared that they will celebrate that day as their son's birthday, which brought another soft smile on Hitomi face. Entire Uzumaki household was preparing to celebrate their young master first birthday. Yeah entire household. They were saddened when they heard Mrs. Uzumaki, Hitomi, miscarriage. It all changes when Kai and Hitomi brought little Naruto issue in the house. Whenever they thought about little Naruto or young master, they couldn't help but starting to fall in love that little bundle of joy. Who want? After all he was the most adorable thing they ever seen. And it couldn't help when he was also radiating the same Virgonic warm energy. The very same energy that his father radiated radiated to make him calm and comfortable when he was born. Hitomi still remember the day when she and her husband brought little Naruto to their home that brought a smile on her face. Flashback begin. The Uzumaki couple just walked inside of their mansion. Suddenly two servants of their household appear in front of them. Welcome Kinsama, Hitomi-sama said one of them, but then their eyes widened in shock as they saw Hitomi was holding a little child in her arms, gazing at the said child lovingly. They wondered who the child was, and his crimson hair was the same as hers. It just shocked them all the bit more. Hitomi-sama who is that child? They asked in a stunned curious voice almost in same time pointing at little Naruto, and Hitomi gently rub his cheek, showing her affection towards the baby. The warmth from the contact when Hitomi gentle rub his cheek caused the baby to wake up. Boo the baby is waking up kin, as he saw the baby slowly blinking and yawned cutely. The servant smiled at the scene but were soon surprised once again when they saw the golden eyes of the baby. Golden eyes. One of the servants said in a surprised tone. And both of them now seeing the eyes of the baby focused on Hitomi's. She no dot dot we just adopted him said kin while looking at his wife happy face dot. Both of them just looked at baby and gasped as they saw his deep beautiful gold eyes staring at them curiously. They saw him staring at them. They just resisted the urge to yell kawaii and glomp him to death at his cute little adorable face. The is our new young master Kinsama Hitomi-sama. Asked one of them in surprise and excitement. Dot dot yes dot dot he is replied Hitomi softly, whose eyes still on the little eyes. Both of them just smiled as they saw the Hitomi hiring in her original self, smiling warmly. It saddened entire household when Hitomi became depressed after her miscarriage. Forgive me Kinsama. But where do you find him? Asked another servant curiously. And then, Kin told them entire story how they find him, much to their shock which soon replaced by happy smile. Um what will he be named? Master asked first servant after hearing full story of their soon to be young master. We named him Naruto Naruto Uzumaki, Shine and San replied Kin as he watched the interaction between his wife and son, and looked back towards the servant and spoke, now go give a call to family doctor, and ask him to come as soon as possible, and tell Sai San to get ready a room for my son and Alfred, go get some milk for the baby said order Kin. H. Hai both exclaimed in unison and went to do their respective work as it was ordered. Flashbacks ends. As she was finished dressing her Naruto-chan and feed some milk there was a knock in her bedroom door. Um and said Hitomi as she gently laid Naruto-chan on the bed. Hitomi-sama, your sister and her daughter just arrived and waiting for you, said one of the servant of the house. Tell them to come here. Dot. I think we have an hour to get party started said asked Hitomi, while watching her baby sleeping face. Hai said the servant and left the room. Dot. Five minutes later. One figure entered the room while holding a baby girl in her arms. The said figure had just looked like Hitomi, but she had purple hair with a ponytail. The said baby girl had blonde hair she was peacefully sleeping in her mother's arms. Hey Ni Chan it's been a while, said the purple hair woman cheerfully yet carefully to not awake her little baby girl. Yes it is. Rose Chan is little Kurumi Chan sleeping. Asked Hitomi while curiously looking at a baby girl in Rose's arms. Yes yeah, she is how's little Naruto Chan doing? Asked Rose before laying her daughter on the bed next to little Ice. As always making everyone in house happy. Replied Hitomi as she recalled just after little Naruto came into Uzumaki family, everyone in house get attracted to him, the cuteness he displayed was more than enough to attract anyone. Both sisters started to taking about different stuff, but little Kurumi soon took their attention as she yawned cutely and suddenly little Kurumi opened her eyes as she felt warm sensation near her, and she looked at the source where the warm sensation coming from and found a little Naruto was laying next to her. The next she did that left their mother with surprised and stunned face. She turned around and cuddled Naruto-chan and closed her eyes and drift off to her precious sleep. Both ladies just see the scene with a surprised face and couldn't help and giggled. Dot. My my little Kurumi already has a crush said Hitomi as she saw her niece cuddle to her son. Well actually they look adorable together. 
Her baby boy already started to attract girls. They look good together said Rose as she saw her daughter now happily cuddling her little nephew. The other said Hitomi softly. Hitomi looked Jemtham for a while and turned around to look Rose. As soon as she saw Rose's face, she smirked. My, my already starting to match making her Ozzy C-H-A-N-N-N-N teased Hitomi before giggling. Rose pouted and said with a fake angry expression, why not Nichan they aren't blood related Rose reminded her one Nichan, why she didn't have any problem if her daughter and nephew get together in future. The Tomi thought for a while and said well only if both have feeling for each other. The dimensional gap. Meanwhile in the dimensional gap a certain large red dragon is also planning to visit his son at his first birthday. He always watch over his son from the gap. But when he saw the whole certain incident, he just chuckled. So you already start to make your harem. Ha son thought great red. Ugh. I can't even visit you son I might scare you mumble great red. Soon, you'll awake drag chan and then I could visit you freely by entering your mindscape. Thought Great Red as he thought of the godfather of his little dragon goddy, did a great work by placing you under the care of Yuzumaki. The Hunan realm. Party was over. That night little Naruto was playing with his parents. Naruto put his hands to the ground and stood up with shaking legs as he took a step towards Hitomi and her eyes widened. Kai gasped as he got to his feet and his hands over his mouth as he saw Naruto take his first step. Hitomi's eyes watered as she saw him take his first step and she saw him take another and saw he was watching her sadly and was confused but urged for him to come to her. Hum on Naruto-chan sniff just a bit more sniff come to ka chan sob come here, my Sachi she said between her sob and Naruto-chan took six more steps and stumbled as she grabbed her in his arms before he fell down and saw him gazing at her curiously. He put his little hand on her cheek and wiped the tear away, and her eyes widened as she understood why he looked sad after his first step and embraced him tightly to her chest, embracing him in her tight hug like he is her lifeline. Oh god Naruto-chan you walked your first step and you walked so much just because you thought I was crying, Naruto-chan said Hitomi said softly as she kissed him on the nose as he scrunched his face a bit and she giggled. I saw this and couldn't help but his eyes also watered. Seems like he is growing up, said Kai before chuckled. I'm skip. Two years. Naruto is three years old now. What surprised his parents was unlike other children Naruto's growth was unbelievably reaching another height. Dot. He already learned how to talk, walk, heck he even learned how to write made his parents speechless. They knew Naruto was a little bit different from the others, but seeing accomplishing and outmastering other child of his own age made the proud on their little eyes. The Yuzumaki couple was now discussing the future of his son. Dot. So it's final, we'll homeschool our Naruto-chan, said Kai Uzumaki to his wife, much to her delight as she didn't want to leave Naruto-chan even just for a minute. That's right. We'll homeschool him, said Hitomi with a determined face. While looking towards the children and speaking again, we'll easily get the best tutors for our baby boy. And that wasn't any issue, Hitomi-chan replied Kin while looking at her with a smile, getting a curious face of his wife. To which he just chuckled and spoke again to satisfy his wife's curiosity. Our Ischan is growing it's felt like yesterday when we hold him first time, paused Kin as he looked at his son who was now playing with Kurumi-chan then continue, and now today. It's been three years but before Hitomi could reply, a third voice called the children, catching their attention too. Naruto and Kurumi became good friends over the last three years. Currently both of them are playing at their garden. Hey Ice, Kurumi over here, said a beautiful purple hair woman. Both kids looked towards the source of the voice. Naruto-chan found his Oba-chan was standing and waving her hands, both children run to her as fast as their tiny leg could and tackled her in three-way hug. Rose just giggled and returned the hug. Over past three years she became closer to both the children. Oba-chan you are here said an overexcited ice. My, my, aren't you overexcited today my cute little nephew close your eyes, said Rose. Naruto-chan nodded and closed his eyes. When he opened his eyes he was given a crimson-colored dragon, toy. He took it and give a peek on her Oba-chan cheek, while thanking her for the gift, and ran towards his parents. Naruto-chan don't run like that you can hurt yourself said his father. Tao-san Tao-san look what Oba-chan gave me said Naruto-chan while showing his birthday present. It always brought a smile to his parents' face when they saw Naruto-chan always enjoy every little thing in his life. Later that night. Dream world. Naruto-chan was peacefully sleeping in his bed. Suddenly his dream world changed. There is completely blank, completely dark, and then a bright light surround the entire place, when the light down, there is a large red dragon appeared from nowhere. The dragon look at the boy couldn't help but wonder how this little boy awakened him in such a young age. To end his curiosity he just asked the boy. Who are you boy? Awaken me in such a young age. Said Drake very curiously. Naruto doesn't know what he gotten himself into dot he just staring at large red dragon. 
He loved dragon, he loved to play with them, when he first asked his parents to buy him a dragon, after he saw one in an IME, his father simply told him dragon do not exist, and it's just a animated program. And the very next day his mother bought a large U which looks like a dragon, which color was surprisingly crimson. And here, he was standing in front of a large red dragon. Um my name is Naruto Uzumaki. Who are you? Where am I now? Are you going to eat me said Naruto. To Drake's surprise he didn't seem too scared while asking questions. Drake just laughed. And said relax kid, I'm not going to eat you. Anyway my name is Drake, the Red Dragon Emperor. We are in your mindscape now answer me boy who are you really? But before Naruto could say anything there was another bright flash, brighter than the previous one which soon involved entire place, and then they heard a voice before the light down. I think I can answer that for him Drake Chan said the voice. Both of them looked towards the source of the voice. Drake was feeling a familiar voice and energy signatures, but he couldn't place whom it belongs to. When they looked at the source of the voice after light down, what they saw was shock them. There is large red dragon larger than the Drake. Naruto was looking at the dragon with odd face, but he was also sensing a deep bond towards the dragon, but he didn't know what was it. Though Drake has another story. I I am impossible. W what are you doing here, and what do you mean you can answer that for him? Asked Drake with a surprised look, he never thought he will meet Great Red here, of all places. What I'm doing here well I'm answering your damn question for him of course. After all he is mine son. What? What did you say? What do you mean by mine son Naruto nearly yelled couldn't believe what was the dragon saying. It is what I mean I'm your true father, my son replied Great Red and another light cover entire body of Great Red, and when the light down Great Red could be seen in his human form. True father? My father name is Kin Kin Yuzumaki if you mean you are my father then did you abandon me, Naruto asked slowly as he places all pieces together. Making Great Red eyes widened. His son think that he abandoned him. Of course not. I'll never do that I love you my son dot dot you see when you born I have to send you to human world my son for your better childhood. I actually do not have wife so no one give you motherly love as well in dimensional gap, you llb bored tell me did you enjoy your time with Yuzumaki. This time Naruto's eyes widened and he nodded and then spoke yes, I enjoyed it ano dot dot you still didn't give in your name. As expected. Ah. My name is True Red Dragon God Emperor, Great Red my son Great Red dramatically introduce himself, getting a sweatshop from Drake, as he never thought he will see the Great Red acting like a child, much becoming a father. Our Red Tao Chan. Can I call you that way to Dragon God means I'm a dragon too? Asked Naruto, getting a heartily laugh from his father. Of course you can my son and I liked it. It has nice ring to it said Great Red, and he looked at his loon before embrace him and right hug, I promise you I'll be there whenever you need me, and yes you are a dragon not just a dragon you are a dragon god more specifically. Whispered Great Red in his son's ear. Am I? A dragon god. A god. Exclaimed Naruto, breaking the hug, Great Red looked at him with a loving gaze and nodded. Indeed you are my cute little dragon god Drake Chan are you still there? Said asked Great Red. Drake couldn't help but astonished at his luck to have Great Red Sun as his host, but he doesn't know it was Great Red to put boosted gear inside Naruto. Yes I'm dot dot I still cannot believe your son dot dot son of the almighty principle of all power is my current host honestly replied Drake. Haha. Ha. Consider yourself lucky Drake chanan anyway Naruto, Drake will teach about the theoretical knowledge about our world dot dot okay my little dragon god. Tease Great Red, getting a irritate dtraig. But he was soft when he was talking to his little dragon god. Oh dot okay. Are you strong Red Tao Chan? Asked Naruto nervously. Both dragons started laughing when they heard Naruto's question, getting an angry pout from Naruto. You both are big meanie said Naruto, still having his pout. Great Red felt uncontrollable when he saw the angry pout from his son, and quickly changed the subject by speaking. My little dragon god, I was laughing at the previous comment on Drake Chan, I wouldn't dare to laugh at you my little hatching, said Great Red, he completely agreed the idea of getting Drake angry, than getting his son angry on him. His son is more important after all. Oh I thought. Dot dot Gomenesai. Tao Chan apologized Naruto. But Drake Chan is a big meanie stated Naruto. Great Red simply nodded, much to Drake irritation. Seeing himself at the corner, Drake tried to explain himself only to interrupt it by Great Red. Of course I'm the strangest being in the existence your daddy is super cool you know. So cool. Can you teach me daddy? I'll become strong too dot dot ullc stated Naruto. Indeed you my little dragon god, but first you have start training physically when you reach suitable age for now we'll teach you how to control your power and magical stuff dot dot, isn't it right Drake? Of course I'd look forward to so you are going to stay here. Of course not Drake chanan I'll be at my dimensional gap. When my little dragon god come here I'll come too. 
be is the only one who call me that and get away with it, Drake thought it suffix of his name Great Red is using for him. Well Naruto-chan you are going to awaken soon come back here every night so we can train little bit. I'm going to awake. Oh, but I want to spend more time here said Naruto with a pout. That is correct Ice and don't tell anyone about this development okay. My little dragon god and if you need something you can always ask me okay. Anything daddy playfully asked Naruto. Anything. Replied Great Red with thinking even for once. Soon Naruto-chan faded away from his dream world, leaving Great Red and Drake-chan alone to talk. Aren't you spoiling him Great Red-sama? Is it? Asked Great Red. Drake simply nodded. Why can't I? He is mine son my little dragon god. Drake no he can't win a argue with Great Red he just dropped the topic. Line break, one year later. Currently Naruto-chan was playing with Karumi and Arena. Arena and her family moved near his house two years ago. Let's just say they become close friend too fast. Nah. Naruto-chan which type of girl you need as your wife asked Arena very shyly. Just hearing that Karumi stare at Ice, showing she was interested in his answer as well. I didn't decide it yet, Iri-chan said Naruto-chan simply. But it's getting late at almost dark. We should return back to our houses, said Naruto-chan while looking at Sky. Why yeah you are right said Arena. Time skip. One year. Naruto-chan just awoke from his sleep or you can say from his training. He continually trained in his dream world with his father and Drake-chan. Much to Drake irritation even he started to call him that. But can he stop him or scold him in front of his father? Dot he won't dare. Naruto couldn't help but remember the day Rina left the town a week ago which she have to. Flashback begin. Hey Naruto can I talk to you something important? Irina asked Dot. But Naruto-chan can see the sadness in her voice. Dot. What's wrong Iri-chan? Naruto asked politely. W we. Are moving Tomro said Irina. Dot she almost cried. And embrace him in a tight hug. Naruto froze just by hearing that what could he say one of his childhood friend just leaving him. He didn't realize, but tears started running down his face. Irina saw this and hugged him tighter. Naruto-chan realized that and hugged her tighter. Promise you'll return Irina asked Naruto-chan still hugging her. Well Naruto said Irina. Hugging him tighter too. Think he promise? Asked demanded Naruto with authority voice. Think he promise Naruto-chan said Irina as he brush away her tears. Flashback ends. Remembering that memory brought a smile on his face. Time skip. Later that evening. Naruto came to the park to play. He used to come here with his friend Arena, but he moved away to another country a week ago, so he came to make new friends to play with. It was when he was about to join the other kids in the park in a game of tag that he spotted a strange girl on her own. She was a cute little girl with long straight black hair down to her hips. Her dark gray eyes looked at him curiously. Dot, she was dressed in a black Lolita dress with a purple ribbon on her back. The most stunning thing about her was her ears, unlike normal ears hers had pointed tips like elves. He walked closer and tried to talk to her. You um who are you? The girl remained unmoving, looking at him shyly. She didn't know why she acted this way, dot but it started a year ago when she find in warm aura that intruded her she started to watch stalk him. And now she is in front of him dot, the closer she is the warm she feel. That she even didn't feel in silence. I am office said the cute little girl. Office. Even with his very limited knowledge of languages, he could tell it wasn't Japanese. Hell, she didn't even look Japanese. Naruto blushed just by her presence and seeing that office cheeks become pink. My name is Naruto. You can call me Ice. Office Chan said Naruto. Are you here with your parents or with your friends? Naruto decided to ask her the most burning question that had popped into his head when he first saw her. I don't have parents or friends. She answered in a monotonous voice. What? That's terrible. Aren't you lonely? Naruto asked, getting even closer. That didn't help the more he get close to her she was starting to feel more warm sensation inside her body due to Naruto's presence. Suddenly she realized what she was feeling. What next she did shock Naruto. She hugged him and bite him between his shoulder and neck and mark him as her and soon an infinity mark appeared on the place where she bited. As she bite, she unintentionally realized a small amount of power towards Naruto, which caused him to feeling the same warm sensation that Office was feeling, since she was a dragon god, to dot dot the next thing that Naruto did stunned Office. He moved and bite Office between her shoulder and neck, and a crimson dragonic tattoo appeared on Office's skin. So you are a dragon? Asked Naruto as he looked at his bite mark. Yes Naruto know about the bite mark continually learning with his father and Drake chan he know a lot about supernatural world, but he didn't know who is Office. Yes, you are too mate. Office asked shyly. And looked at her shoulder where Naruto bite why she acting this way, let just say it's about finding her soulmate. Just hearing her calling him her mate, made Naruto-chan blushed his whole face become crimson yes I'm Office Heim. 
And now office blushed hearing him calling her Haim. Hum, let's play. Naruto took the hand of the girl and walked off with her. After their little play. Office Haim, you said you were all alone, right? Yes. Then how about you live with us? I'd love to set office. Naruto took off his hand and walked to his house. It took him only 10 minutes to convince them to let office stay with them, but they agreed anyway. Seeing the sad face as Arena left the town and Kurumi got busy in schooling and came only in weekends, and so seeing his son happy face they didn't need anything if that little orphan girl can make him smile so be it. Time skip. Later that night. Naruto was laying in his bed. His eyes were closed. Then he felt something in his bed when he opened his eyes he saw office snuggle into him. Naruto blushed deeper than crimson when he felt office body. WW what are you doing here office Haim? Sleeping. I mean in my bed. I feel comfortable here. Oh dot okay. Hmm. Naruto just closed his eyes and after some time he found himself in dream world. I can't believe this. You're not the only one dot we are traveling in same boat Drake Chan. But get married to infinity dragon god dot I still can't believe this. What are you both talking about? Red Tao San. Drake Chan. Well we are talking about your wife Naruto Chan. My wife. Office Chan. She is not just a normal dragon my little dragon god well she is Auroboros dragon or the infinite dragon god. Office, second strongest being in the existence. W dot what? He is right mate. As soon as they heard the voice they had looked towards the source and found that office was floating over there. Office Chan. So you know huh? Trying to harm my son infinity. Said very pissed great red in a calm voice. I do not have any intention to harm my mate, father-in-law. Well with that office coughed Great Red off guard. Not just Great Red, but Drake also surprised to hear office calling Great Red father-in-law. And for Naruto he first he was trying to recover that office as second strongest being, and now she is her wife. Well no one expect to have a mate at the age of five. But for Naruto what we can say there isn't anything normal about him except living a normal life till now, but I think that was going to change soon. Dot, if already didn't changed when office joined Yuzumaki household. Office Chan, are you sure I mean you want me as your husband asked Naruto Chan nervously. Let just say being a dragon god really boost your mentality. And who kidding he already started his magical training a year ago. Why yes I am my mate, my ice. Well if past conversation didn't surprise Great Red and Drake this will. Both of them are shocked that Office is now possessive over something other than silence that is what? Son of Great Red. Naruto just blushed at Office's affection. So you know. About me Naruto asked nervously. What being the son of Baka are I mean Great Red? Why yeah? Well I just come to know when you are sleeping I since too familiar power for Drake Chanan I can understand that you are Red Dragon Emperor too, but when I sense Baka are I mean Great Red, I just have to come to your mind to check it. So you weren't angry or mad at me? Wait how can you enter to my mindscape? Well even Great Red and Drake want to answer of this question. No, I am not mad at you, and for the second question is why simple, it's because of mate Mark. So even I can enter in your mindscape. Yes, you can, my eyes. Let me warm you office if you hurt my son, you'll be paid dearly said Great Red in a very threatening voice. I promise you Baka our Great Red I'll never harm my mate, my eyes. Suddenly Naruto-chan awake from his dream world and found that his office Haim was resting her head in his chest. Naruto-chan wrapped his arms around her and went back to his sleep. The next day. Morning sunlight came to Yuzumaki household. But it was a different morning. Office and Naruto were sleeping peacefully cuddling each other like teddy bear. When Hitomi came to Naruto room she saw state of his son she just giggled actually they look super cute together. Dot. Suddenly an evil idea got in her mind she went back to her room get a camera and pick a photo in which both of the cuddle each like teddy bear. Oh my she got an exclusive item to tease his son unknown to her Kai. Just come to Naruto room to find out what taking so much time to awake Naruto when he saw this. He just smirked and mattered another girl add to his harem well it unfortunately for him that Hitomi heard that and that brought a smack on his head. Dot. But that noise Naruto began to awake his mother saw that and said, Good morning sleepy head looks like you and your girlfriend had fun last night. Naruto blushed deeper than red like in tomato. And said it's not what it looks like she isn't feel comfortable, so she slept here. Oh yes she is fully comfortable in your bed while cuddling you, I wonder why. And what's with that you aren't denying that she is your girlfriend said Kai as he smirked widely. He can't miss the chance to tease his son can he? Office has also started to awake. Dot. The first thing she saw was Naruto was looking at her, and when she saw Naruto she just said, Good morning, my mate. What? Mate. Mr. And Mrs. Yuzumaki exclaimed in unison. Now here start the first unique different morning moments. I wonder why too. Yuz now come to know this is not going to long morning, 
But long day two so he decided to just tell his parents that she is just his girlfriend and she liked to refer boyfriend term as mate, but it didn't help how the heck a five years plus having girlfriend. Well that's what he thought, but his mother's next word surprise him. Dot. Well just don't make us grandparents already said Kai as he teased his son Naruto blushed like there is no Tomro, while well, office just idled her head. Dot, to just leave the awkward situations he got off the bed and ran towards the bathroom. At the breakfast table. Naruto is currently sitting next to his office Haim dot while having his breakfast. Na office chan how about getting homeschooling with Naruto sound good? Asked Naruto chan mother looking at office. The office just idled her head. Well when she think about that he thought she got more chance to stay close to her Naruto and spend more time with him now without thinking anymore. She said, yes mother. Well that surprised Hitomi as well as Kai. Hitomi didn't help but ask again, W what did you say? Yes mother. Well if you mind calling you mother I wouldn't call. I just thought office was cut in middle when Hitomi said no 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 no. I didn't mean that and of course you can call me mother for now on you only call me mother oh dot okay. Office Chan. The office just nodded. And you can call me father office Chan said Kai with a smile. The office nodded again. Ah I forget to mention we are going to visit Kyoto next week. Yes. Kyoto. That's great we are going to have lots of fun there dot isn't it right office Haim said Naruto-chan cheerfully, but he failed to notice the shocked look of his parents' faces when he used Haim. Of course mate said office while eating her chocolate cake. Chapter 2. Trip to Kyoto, Saving Royal Princess. The day was the day Naruto and his parents were planning to visit Kyoto to Naruto's grandparents from his parental side. Oh yes they lived at Kyoto. Naruto was excited to meet his grandparents who he hadn't met yet. So he was quite nervous too that how his grandparents gonna react to him when they meet each other. When Hitomi saw this she understood what Naruto was thinking thanks to her motherly instincts. Honey, don't get nervous your grandparents are good people, they always ask us to visit them as well as bring you there, so they finally meet their only grandson, so don't worry they will love you dot dot just the way we love you. Hearing that his grandparents will love him make Naruto-chan more excited to meet them. But the have don't talk with anyone rudely said Hitomi. But Hitomi knows that Naruto-chan didn't talk to anyone rudely even he gave household servants proper respect that greatly shocked their servants, too that a 4-5 years boy, giving a proper respect to someone to a servant no less. That made household servant quite happy that their young master is gentle, polite. And not arrogant. They already know that he is smart and intelligent. Dot. Naruto just nodded to her demand. Naruto-chan heard about Kyoto a lot from his parents. Suddenly Naruto-chan realized someone holding his hands. He looked and saw his office Haim was now holding her hand with a curious face. To Ice, seeing office curious face was adorable. Dot. When his parents saw the whole situation they had to control their urge to yell Kawaii and hug them to death. Why are you so excited to visit Kyoto, mate? Asked Office with a curious expressions. Well for starter, we are going to visit my grandparents whom even I didn't meet yet. And secondly Kyoto is a very nice place. It is a place as full of quiet temples, sublime gardens, colorful shrines and geisha scurrying to secret liaisons. So we can lots of fun there Office Chan said Naruto Chan cheerfully. The office giggled at her mate cheerful expressions. Suddenly she realized something about Kyoto. Well we can see Kitsune there said Office. It soon. Why dot you mean nine tail fox? Or something that for real? Yes they lived there. Tsugoi office chan. Time skip, bullet train. It was 20 minutes after the bullet train had left Tokyo station. It was the first time both Naruto and office traveling with the bullet train. It was first time traveling to Kyoto, so Naruto parents decided to travel with bullet train, so Naruto chan can experience how it is like to traveling through bullet train. Naruto chan was sitting on the last row of seats with office. Across the aisle was his parents' seats. Mate, how's your training going on? Ask office in low voice, so that only her mate can hear. Naruto first surprised because it is the first time office was asking about his training. Well office chan dot dot father and drake chan taught me how to control my power and some magical stuff. Would you ask? I will help. You will? Really? Yes, you are my mate, my Naruto chan. Whenever office tell him my Naruto chan there is always a pink blush on his face. Arigato office chan. After we get back from the trip, let's start your training my mate, my eyes. On the bullet train, it was just as Naruto-chan and office finished enjoying the seaweed rice balls specially prepared by Hitomi. The announcement sounded that we are arriving at Kyoto presently. They got off the train, and now we can see the roof of the Kyoto station was covered by a huge atrium. Inside the station were many automatic escalators. It was truly a massive railway station. It doesn't lose to Tokyo at all. As a major sightseeing destination, it was natural that the ancient capital would have built a station on such a massive scale. It was crowded, totally packed. Suddenly an butler appeared from nowhere. 
Akin sama, Hitomi sama, it's good to see you again, Yuzumaki sama, Kin's father, send me pick you up, said the butler. James? Is that you? asked Kin Dot. Hi, Kin sama, said James. Hi, I'm Skip. When they reached his grandparents' house, their reaction was different in front of him a huge three story mansion. Naruto maybe lived in mansion, but it is first time seeing other than that. Office doesn't show any extra reaction. His fathers haven't smiled that he came to visit his parents. When they entered the mansion Naruto-chan can see old age couple. Father, it's good to see you again said Kin and give his father a manly hug. Hello mother it's nice to see you again said Hitomi while walk towards the old lady. Ah Hitomi-chan. Look how beautiful you become honey. Said the lady and then her eyes laid on little boy and girl who were holding each other hand. Hitomi saw this and acted. Honey, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hitomi said gently pushing Naruto-chan and office towards them. Hi. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet ya. Naruto greeted with a smile. I am Office Uzumaki said Office with a little smile. Yes she take the last name a week ago when she started homeschooling with Naruto. Actually she need a last name for that what's better to way to use Naruto's. After all he is her mate. Old lady embraced them in a warm hug. Hello I'm your grandma. And it's good to finally meet you my cute little grandson. And I'm your grandpa. Naruto-chan greeted old man with a warm hug. And Hitomi-chan why I didn't know I have a granddaughter in first place. Ask Isa's grandma with a confused expressions. Well, mother we took her in last week. Since she was orphaned this time reply come from kin. Yeah dot dot she was, but now she have us as parents, said Hitomi with a warm smile. Grandma just gently patted off his head who was wearing a pink gothic dress. Yes she changed her dress many time and asked every time to Naruto how she look. Naruto still remember the day when she walked in his room wearing nothing just black bikini what to say. If he was adult he was going for a nose blood until he dies from blood loss. He just stare at her like he saw a ghost dot. And it become worse when Drake Chan started to teasing him about office much to Naruto embracement. Seems like I have a granddaughter too dot, said the elder Yuzumaki. Naruto saw a big garden through the window. Which was well maintained. Hey, grandpa. Grandma. Can we play at that garden? Asked Naruto-chan while staring at the garden. His grandma giggled and grandpa chuckled at their grandson hyperactive nature. Of course honey. Do you even need to ask? Just don't hurt yourself and look after your sister said very amused grandma. W what? Sister? Naruto and Office just yelled in unison. While his parents just signed. What isn't Office-chan your little sister, Naruto-chan? Asked his grandpa. Time for drop a nuclear bomb. Thought Naruto's father. He can already see that his son on the way to make an harem for himself in future. He is my maid office said immediately, not wanting her foster grandparents to call her, sister of her mate. W dot what? Said both grandparents nearly yelled. What she means is she is Naruto's girlfriend said Kin trying to act before his son declared married. What he didn't know his son already got married, draconic law. Both his grandparents looked at each other but couldn't believe that their only five years old grandson Naruto already land a girlfriend. Not only that but he was living with her under the same roof. It's just like living relationship. They look towards Ice. Who just nodded. And then his grandpa reacts. That's my grandson. You just made your grandpa proud Naruto-chan said his grandpa cheerful tone. Naruto doesn't know how to react. He just nodded. You know father your grandson going to have an harem, said Kin before smirking. Now both male chuckled pervertedly that earned them a smack on their head from grandma and Hitomi. Line break. Naruto and Office now playing at the garden with his grandpa. When his father saw that and remembered when he used to play in that garden too when he was a child. This bring back memories isn't it? Kai Chan asked a feminine voice from behind. He looked back and saw his mother was standing there with his wife both looking at his son then him. Yes mother, this certainly bring back some memories said Kai happily while remembering the past. Suddenly a maid come and said Lunasama dinner is ready to serve. Elder woman just nodded. Naruto-chan office-chan come here, asked demanded grandma. Both children run towards their grandma or grandma-in-law for a certain cute girl, I wonder who. What is it grandma? Asked Naruto-chan while office just remained silent. Grandpa understood what's going on walked inside his mansion. Oh clean your hands kiddo it's dinner time said grandma. Naruto-chan was about to ask for five minutes more, but a single glare from his mother and he'd better choose to remain silent. Just like his mother can read him like a open book. Line break. After dinner. The grandma aren't you going to tell us a story? Asked Naruto-chan with making a cute face. Of course my grandson, how could I deny anything to that cute face of yours said grandma, but before that we have to discuss about the places we are going to visit Tomro sweetie. Don't worry about that we'll take care of that said grandpa. Grandma just nodded and lead both children to their shared room. 
Well office give an excuse that she got nightmares, so she wanted to share her room with Naruto. And Naruto give excuses that this was first time living in someone's else house. Well in fact he just addicted to cuddle office while sleeping. His grandparents agreed immediately not wanting their grandchildren feel any discomfort. Next morning. Sunlight hit Naruto and office shared bedroom. He yawned and opened his eyes from his sleep, or you can say training and found office resting her head on his chest, while cuddling him and his hands around her as usual position for both of them. Her long hair open spreading over his chest. He looked at the clock and saw it's already 7, and suddenly remember that today they are going to visit many places. He got up silently or not wanting to wake office. He does care about her. Unknown to him he started to care about her deeply. Naruto and office now sitting in breakfast table with their parents or parents, in law for a certain girl. Dot, dot, I wonder who. Natao san where we are going today? asked very exited Naruto. Natomi and his grandma giggled at her son and grandson existed behavior. Naruto chan that surprise for both of you said Hitomi. Dot. Naruto just pouted. His face was totally adorable. Later in the evening Naruto face was totally bliss to visit many places with his parents and grandparents while holding off his hand. Now here they sharing ice cream since Naruto-chan dropped his on the ground and office offered sharing her ice cream. They were returning to house now, grandparents. His parents and grandparents were discussing about tomorrow that they are gonna busy for two three days. So in the end they decided to let servants show them different places for two or three days. They just arrived home and tell the children about tomorrow first Naruto doesn't seem too happy to going without them, but understand they are busy, so he just nodded and he and office just walked towards their shared room. Next morning, this time office awake first and found herself on Naruto. She looked at his sleeping face and couldn't help herself she leaned and give a peek on his cheek. Finding something on his face, Naruto-chan starting to awake and found what office did. His face was become redder than tomato now. Naruto and office were now in a park while a butler sitting on a couch. Dot. Naruto and office felt something and sneak themselves from servants. A young girl at the age of four or five with the appearance of an elementary school student. She has golden, blonde hair tied in a ponytail and matching eyes. Her main attire is the traditional Maiko outfit and tall Jetta with white tabi. The sleeves of her Hayori feature a giant red star-shaped pentagram, surrounded by five smaller pentagrams in between the points. She was currently surrounded by people. People. No they aren't just people there is something dark. They are devils. Gee go away. Leave me alone. The young girl shouted in a tone filled with fear. So this is the daughter of Kyoto's ruler Yasaka. There's eight devils walking towards her slowly. They're having evil smiles. A young girl shouted once again and this time, she pushed both of her hands forward and released some fire of hers tried to attack them. Now that's being rude to attack someone who just come to say hi, said one of them. One of the devils grabbed the little girl in her neck. Suffocating her. He was about to attack the little girl. The girl shut her eyes tightly. There's tears coming from her eyes. Aunt, breathe Kachan. Someone please help me. Suddenly a crimson energy beam hit that devil and completed turn him to ash. The girl couldn't register just what happened. One minute the said devil was there and blink of an eye a crimson energy beam hit him turning him completely to ash. The rest of devil have horrified face at what just happened to their comrade. And turned to where the crimson energy come from. The figure walk in and said, you know it's not a proper way to treat a cute girl you disgusting creatures, and now figure appearing completely as just five years old boy. Dot. When Kunu heard that she blushed. Now devils are pissed. Beyond pissed. How dare a child call something to them and kill their leader. One of them charged at him with killing intent. Suddenly a black beam of energy hit him turning him completely ash. And now another figure appear, a little girl wearing gothic dress with long black hair. Now every devil present there saw her and realized who they are messing with. Instantly four of them fainted remaining two of them shaking with fear. Gunu run towards her savior. She didn't know who they are, but they save her, and that's enough reason for her to trust them. The girl looked towards her savior and found that a boy with crimson hair gold eyes was looking at her. Next to him, a cute young girl with long black hair down to her hips and get eyes. Her attire consists of a black gothic lolita fashion. He thanks for saving me I'm Kunu um you are. Said Kunu politely to her savior. Kunu a cute name I wonder you are more cute or your name. By the way I'm Naruto Uzumaki said Naruto honestly, but only if he know he just flirt with a girl in front of his wife. But Laf is still looking at her mate with confused expressions why my mate said something like that. Is he really trying to make an harem for himself? And it couldn't help when she remembered when their foster father teased Naruto-chan about something related to harem all she can guess now that her mate going to have an harem thought office. I am office at office immediately when she realized she was spacing out. 
Before they continue their talk a young woman with a voluptuous figure and golden blonde hair with matching eyes appeared. The young woman is too dressed in a shrine maiden attire. Humming behind her were several Tengus wearing some ancient Chinese armors. Seeing the woman the little girl yelled Kachan and run to her and hug her tightly. And the guards run to devils and seize them. Little girl told whole situation and the woman looked towards the boy and when she laid her eyes on the little girl her eyes widened. Of course she know who is she. After all, the figure in front of her is Infinity Dragon God Office. Hello, my name is Yusaka. Thanks for saving my daughter here, judging the person who are traveling with and taking care of those devils. I think you know us said asked the woman who revealed her name as Yusaka. Naruto just stared at her and said, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, and the cute girl here is Office Uzumaki. Before you ask. No we aren't brother and sister. And I know about supernatural, but you are. I'm a Kitsune, and Yakai. Naruto eyes were widened. So that's why he was feeling something different about them. Hey Kitsune has nine tails. Yes. Can I see? Your tails. Can I? Please. 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 Ask Naruto cheerfully with a puppy face. Isaka just smiled at the boy reaction and off his faciplund. Now Kunu was trying to act and so she did something that greatly surprised her mother. She come forward and said, I'll show you I see San. She let her tails and ears out. W wow they are just beautiful as your name, Kunu-chan said Naruto while touching her tails. Now Kunu blushed deeper than red. Yusaka saw that and understood what her daughter feeling now. She just smiled. Suddenly three pairs of foot can be heard so Kunu turns completely human. And soon three person revealed themselves as two butlers and one mate in their uniform. Naruto-sama Afa-sama where have you been we are looking for you everywhere we are just about to call household and they aren't going to like this, said one of butler. We are playing with our little friend over there said Naruto, trying to give excuse while pointing towards Kunu. And then they looked at that direction and saw a woman and a little girl and two guards behind them, and now completely shocked. And they realized they are from royal family of Kyoto. They bowed to them and said Yusaka-sama we are sorry if our young master cause you any trouble. That coughed Yusaka attention completely. And she looked at them there is H mark on butler and maid outfit and Naruto mentioned he is in Yuzumaki, then she turned to Naruto and asked, are you somehow related to Max Yuzumaki? Hi, he is my grandfather Yasaka-san. It will be lie if we say it didn't surprise her. After all he was the only grandson of the richest man in Kyoto. Is this all? No, it isn't. The real shock is he is the grandson of strongest man and woman in Kyoto. No he didn't cause any troubles to us, but he did my save my daughter's life, said Yasaka happily. Now it's time to give two butler and one maid a surprise. It really surprised them that their young master who just five years old saving the only princess of Kyoto. We glad to know that our young master didn't cause any trouble for you and young master it is getting dark. We should return to our house. said the maid this time. Why yes, wait. Hey, Kunu-chan. Can we meet Tomro? At the park we can play together. Kunu just looked at him still have little pink blush on her face and nodded oh of course. Naruto-kun. Her mother looked at her with surprise face. She thinks she get enough surprise for today, but no. Her daughter just used Kun. Now she realized she was spacing out. And Naruto was waving his hand and saying goodbye to them. She just wave him back. Entire whole conversation office just stood there staring at her mater Naruto while holding his hand with hers. Now they returned to their house. When servants mentioned saving the princess part. His parents and grandparents looked at him with shocked expression. He just told them he just save her from thugs. Their reaction was different. His mother just scolded him to putting his life at risk and traveling with servants while his father said, Good job, son, add another girl in your harem and a princess no less. Well, that earned him another smack in his head from Hitomi. But his grandparents' reaction was different. They just smiled, but inside they couldn't thought, How's this possible? After all, Yusaka is current leader of royal family publicly, but they know she is in Kitsune, and saving her daughter means a little kit. They couldn't found any different aura around Naruto. He was completely normal. If Naruto know what his grandparents were thinking he'll thank Great Red next time when he meet for placing a seal on Naruto and Office. Only people who saw Office before in that form can realize who really she is now Grandpa heard Naruto-chan calling his wife. Ram is something wrong? You are spacing out. Is she thinking the same what I was thinking? Thought Grandpa Max, already mentioned his name with Yusaka. No. No. I'm fine honey, I was just thinking which type of story I'm gonna tell you tonight. As she said Naruto cheerfully while saying, you are the best grandma his grandma just smiled. And her eyes laid on her husband who was completely silent after the servants told the about the little incidents. Is he thinking the same? Thought grandma. The much for her surprise, Max just gestured her to come. And she did. What is it Max? Asked grandma. Are you thinking about what I'm thinking about? Luna-chan. 
Why you mean? Yes. So what now if Naruto does have any sacred gear? We'll help him with anything. We can't let just anyone come in our life in future and take Naruto away from us, he just lived with us only for two days I don't know, but I feel deep affection towards him and try to protect him from any harm Luna-chan. And he is our grandson. You are right we'll be damn if we let something happen to him, but are you sure that he haven't scared gear? Well we can't sense it for now because he is just a child, but saving a kitsune not from the thugs that I'm 100% sure how a human can achieve that answer, he must have not scared gear. I hope everything will come out only to us soon, otherwise it is going to become troublesome. But if anyone try to harm my grandson, they will be know why I'm called, the angelic beast. Don't forget they don't even want to face the wrath of angelic ice princess. Unknown to them Naruto-chan and office was there whole time. Naruto-chan saw his grandma was leaving, so he decided to help her with anything that she was going to do, then she gonna tell him a great story before going to sleep. But he didn't know he was going to know something that. Even office has little bit shocked expressions. Naruto and office both were sitting on their shared bed in their shared room, all they think about what they just heard from their foster grandparents. Naruto still remembered the day when met his grandparents he can sense something holy from them, he guessed that maybe there is some shrines near the mansion, but now when his grandparents used angelic word and talked about sacred gear dot all things become clear. They are angles said office when she saw her mate was thinking about that. But angles can't mate if they, they will fall. Yes they will, but what if they weren't born as angles? What do you mean? Didn't born as angles. You already know about reincarnated system. You mean like devil's evil pieces? Yes, like that but something different, heaven use brave saint they are based on devil's evil pieces. The brave saints are currently only limited to the seraphs. I didn't know that means my grandparents are working under one of the seraphs. Most likely let's just think about it. Two angles who were working under one the seraphs in Kyoto, and you already mentioned they never visited you, so that's mean they didn't leave Kyoto. They must be angels as ambassadors here. And an high class scared gear holder. Angel just doesn't reincarnate anyone. It was a shock for Naruto. What will happen if they got to know about him dot dot will they tell his parents? Afa saw this and pulled him in a hug and said, don't worry I'm with you even if they find out, all you have to do is so that scared gear of yours nothing else. But what will happen when they find out I'm a dragon a dragon god no less? Well that time you can just simply say the drag turn you into one. And what will happen when they offer to become one of them I mean an angel. Akamate just tell the you will fall said office while giving a peek on his cheek dot. She is right partner. Drag Chan. Is that you? Of course it's me and remember you will never introduce yourself as son of Great Red until you are ready to face entire world said Drake via mental link. Then how I'm gonna introduce myself? Just introduce yourself as Red Dragon Emperor. You are right partner said Naruto and Drake cut the mental pink. Next morning, the little boy rubbed his eyes gently and got up from the bed tiredly from his certain post ion. Suddenly someone knock and enter the room. Naruto chan saw his grandma enter the room. Before he can ask anything, she said, Naruto chan, me and your grandpa have an important meeting today, so, before she can say anything, Naruto chan cut the talking by giving a tight hug and saying, Good morning, Bachan. And don't worry, today me and office are going to visit our new friend and play with her. Wow, Naruto chan, you made a new friend here, I'm happy for you, okay, but two to three servants always with you whenever wherever you go, understood? Asked grandma almost in demanding time. Ishu and Office are now playing Takunu at the park. As they promised. Naruto wants to know many things about Kitsune and Kunu tell him almost everything she knows. This is the first time she made friend, and now she was playing with them. Just being a royal princess therapy has certain restrictions placed on her for safety reason. Naruto is her first friend. Well she also get along with Office and started to call her fist chan well this was a new experience for Office too. She just smiled. Now it's time go back home it's already getting dark. Nakunu-chan can we meet again Tomro? Of course Naruto-kun we can to be honest I enjoyed playing with you and Fist-chan, I never had any friend you guys are my first friend you know. What? You never had. Remember you are my first friend too and something more said office while mumbled last part to herself. Oh yes. Anyway do you like something? I'll bring it with me Tomro. Asked Naruto to her new friend. Sweet said Kunu cheerfully while jumping. Seems like she share same taste like you office Haim said Naruto dot dot only if he know she really share same taste. It's been a week, Naruto and office met Kunu and started spending time with her. Max requested Kai to stay here with them dot, Kai realized he is missing them too dot, so he agreed immediately and rearranged homeschooling for Naruto and office here dot, and when he told Hitomi about the current situation, she happily nodded dot, why wouldn't she? Kai's parents treat her like her own daughter dot. When they told it to Naruto and Office Naruto was starting jumping joyfully. Man he really liked Kyoto. Well Office smiled widely first time dot. 
Now today Kunu is coming to their house for play. Of course many times in last week they visited each other houses but today Naruto parents was out of the town for business purposes, leaving Naruto in office with their grandparents and grandparents in law of certain cute girl who wearing white gothic dress today, I wonder who. Naruto-chan planned to spend time with office and Kunu at the garden he saw Kunu was coming, but not alone this time her mother and four guards with them. Dot, dot, Naruto greeted them. Dot, much to Naruto's surprise, when Yusaka asked him call her haha. Dot, dot, Naruto didn't understand what's going on. On the other hand Kunu was blushing heavily. Dot, Yusaka thought that's enough teasing for today and tell them that she has a meeting with Naruto grandparents about politics. Naruto and office understood immediately that it is a meeting about angles and yakai faction. Now Naruto, Kunu and Office are playing with each other at the garden. Naruto wanted to tell Kunu about the new development about his staying. Nakunu-chan I have a news for you said Naruto while making a serious face. Kunu is not a fool she know that one day Naruto have to leave he just came here for vacation and to meet his grandparents. And when they leave dot dot she will become alone again. We are going to stay for a while, said Naruto and Office in unison. Kunu first have to register what they told her. When she realized she tackled both of them to bone crushing hug. I thought you both leaving this town oh my god. I'm so happy Naruto kun fist chan. Say Kunu chan how about homeschooling with us? Asked Office surprising eyes. It is true that Office started to consider Kunu as her friend. I have to ask Ka chan dot dot, but I don't think she is going to refuse that, fist chan said Kunu with a smile. Before anyone say anything a fireball launched towards them almost hitting them. I thought assassinating princesses of Kyoto will be hard job, said a male voice. But when smoke cleared he stunned to see that his attack did nothing. A crimson barrier protected them. What? How is this possible that attack was a high class attack? How could a child like you create a barrier in first place? The attacker shouted. Naruto can see two figures was standing where the fireball come from. Spreading their devil wings. When he heard one of them shouting at him. He just did what that silent him permanently. He released a barrier and sending a crimson energy beam towards him turning him to ash the other devil, have horrified face that a child just destroy his comrade, what worst is he doesn't even seem to trying, and he killed his comrade like it was nothing, now he was shaking in gear for his life. Dot. He knew now that that child can kill him like it was nothing. He please don't kill me I'll do whatever you say just please don't kill me, said the devil in shaking voice. Before Naruto could say anything five figures arrived there. Two were his grandparents one them was Yusaka, and remaining two were his grandparents' personal guards. What's going on here? Asked Max in demanding tone. And who are you here? No my question should be what are you doing here devil? Asked Max still in demanding tone. And then he looked towards the children Luna already tackled Naruto-chan and bone crushing hug, while Yusaka doing the same with Kunu. Dot dot when Luna felt office was left out. She just hugged her too, making a three-way hug. W we are just sent here to assassinate the child over there B but please don't kill me. I beg of you. Just hearing that all adults have dark face the temperature of the garden is decreased almost 20 degrees in just two sec. No one registers what just happened when the said devil eggs were frozen in ice. Dot. Everyone looked towards where that came from, except Max. Dot. They saw a doll made of ice near Luna, while she manipulating ice and revealing four pairs of her angelic wings. While Yusaka is summoning her fire to burn that devil alive who dared to try to kill her daughter. Now now ladies calm down and you pointing at devil, still have that dark face that he made when he heard that devil try to kill his grandson and granddaughter. You said yes dot dot, but you are alone explain now before I end you, said Max in threatening voice. The said devil is now sweating. The temperature maybe get lower, but what he can see is pain and fear for his life. I I had one comrade with me, but that kid killed him, said the devil in trembling voice, while pointing towards ice. Now that's catch everyone attention. All are looking towards him like asking to explain he just nodded. BDRAIG time for a big revelation. Dot dot are you ready? Asked Naruto. Of course partner let do this together. Naruto just looked towards his grandparents and summoned boosted gear. Everyone except office eyes widened in realization what they saw. Is it? Luna was trying to ask but cut off by Max. Yes it is what you are thinking Luna-chan. Our grandson is current red dragon emperor said Max while checking his grandson boosted gear. Looks like someone is going to continue our family legacy of sacred gear, mumbled Max and Luna in same time time. Naruto just explained that he activated it while saving Kunu also getting some weird dream about dragons that he doesn't remember. Which everyone believed it let just say who going to doubt a five years old boy. How about I train you Naruto-chan? Asked Max. You have something like that too grandpa? Asked Naruto-chan curiously. Max just chuckled. I have Annihilation Maker that is said to be par with boosted gear of yours Naruto-chan not just me your grandma have too said Max. Yes Naruto-chan it is true I have absolute demise said Luna, while pointing towards Doll of Ice. 
I'll help your training too Naruto-chan said Yusaka shocking Max and Luna. Looks like your dragon part is already doing his work, Naruto-chan Chan said very amused Max dot, and that earned him a smack on his head from Luna. After that incident Yusaka and Kunu left Naruto house, promising that they will visit Tomro too. Now Naruto and Afa sitting on the couch in front of them their grandparents or grandparents-in-law for certain black hair beauty, I wonder who. Max told him everything about who is he. How he become an angel serving under Gabriel the Seraphs with Luna-chan. You know Office, we heard about Office who is a dragon god you know who is par with god, and you are the first person who has same name said Max. Naruto chuckled for the first time nervously. Time to drop a nuclear bomb thought Ice. I wonder where he got that trained from. She is the very same grandpa said Naruto nervously don't know how their grandparents gonna react. But Office, as infinity dragon god. How? Yelled both Max and Luna in unison. Chapter 3. Meeting with a dragon king, a gift from the father. I, Mark. My Naruto-chan is my mate, Grandpa said office while sitting close to Naruto with a worried look. She knew no one can separate her from her mate except certain Baka Red. But she don't want to any type of problem between her mate and his family. She just lowered her head. Naruto-chan saw this. Let just say mate Mark shares emotion too. So Naruto-chan was now feeling his office Heim feeling. He doesn't want to see office Chang in such mood. He holds office Chan's hand with his own hand, stand up and look into his Grandpa's eyes. While Naruto was doing that, Office couldn't help but think what was her mate thinking. She soon got her answer when Naruto spoke. I did the same grandpa. I mark her as mine stated Naruto boldly while holding Office Chan hand. Office eyes widened as her mate protected her, stand for her. Office could feel as Naruto did that some type of emotion started to build inside her. Both his grandparents gasped at the sudden change of Naruto behavior. Must be your dragon entices said Max before signed. He knew that a dragon doesn't let harm what is his. That is what Naruto was doing right now. Huh? Did Drake change you into a half-dragon? Asked Max. Leave it to me, partner. Suddenly boosted gear materialized on Naruto's left hand, shocking his grandparents. A pleasure to meet you Naruto's grandparents Max and Luna. I'm Dragaka Red Dragon Emperor. And to answer your question, yes I did. Some years ago Naruto got high fever and to save his life, I have to turn him into a dragon. Drag. It's honor to speak with you one of the heavenly dragon did you half-dragon? Right. Asked Max when he heard Drake saying turn him into dragon without mentioning half part. No, full dragon, a pure-blooded dragon since he was just child I was able to complete turn him into a dragon. Also he can use boosted gear better as he is full dragon. Ah, I see so something like that even possible. Strange. Never heard of it. Something like. So our grandson is full dragon. So he is going to live long like us. Dot dot that's great we can spend more time with him, said Luna happily totally forgetting they were discussing about Naruto relationship. She had the horrified face when Drake Chan told them that Naruto had viral fever and could die. But now her grandson was safe and in front of her. Naruto promise me you aren't going to tell anyone that you are Red Dragon Emperor stated Max with a serious expression. Luna nodded her head in agreement. I promise grandpa, but what if innocent life in danger? Asked Naruto. As he don't want to feel helpless when he wanted to help someone. Then you can until then I'm gonna train you. Your training start Tomro kiddo said Max before chuckling at her grandson heroic behavior. And I will protect my Naruto-chan with my life, Office stated boldly. She liked Naruto even before she met. But now after spending time with him she fell in love with him. Seems like we already have granddaughter-in-law. Just don't make us great-grandparents already, said Luna before giggling. Dot dot Naruto just blushed heavily. Seeing his face Max murked and said, so Naruto how many girls you wanted to add on your little harem, as he said Naruto blushed redder than tomato. And that's earned him a smack on his head from Luna. A week later. Naruto thought that he gonna train with his grandparents will be exciting, but he didn't know he is going to train with gods too. Yes. Naruto is going to start training with Shinto gods. Yusaka's yakai faction is ally with Shinto faction, dot she contacted their leader more especially Amaterasu, and asked her a favor to train current red dragon emperor. Amaterasu asked how could she trust him. Well she just explained that Naruto is just 5 years old and have a pure heart. So Shinto Trinity tried to test little ice. And much to their surprise he passed with flying colors. So in the end they agreed, also when they come to know he is grandson of Max and Luna, they immediately agreed to keep his identity safe and secret. Afa said she will help Naruto training, but will start hers when Naruto complete theirs. Susanoo, Amaterasu, Tsukiyomi son Wukong, Yasaka, Max and Luna are going to train him they choose one day per week. The day he was training with Office Chan. From Tomro he is going to train with God's dot. Drag and his father offered that they can teach him dragonic magic, as well as ancient magic and dark magic. 
which he happily accepted. And suddenly Naruto's body was enveloped in a crimson dragonic aura. And a metallic voice sounded very loud. Bulge dragon over booster. Naruto body covered in red metallic armor and another metallic voice could be heard. Welsh Dragon Balance Breaker Scale Mail. You did it partner. You are the youngest host of mine who unlock Balance Breaker. Thanks Drake Chan I can't achieve it without your help. After all he is mine son Drake C-H-A-N-N. -N. Hi dad by the way, can I change the design of the armor? All you have to do is think and it'll be done my little dragon god. This armor has a pair of rocket thrusters at the back that gives a temporary boost of speed and flight, assisted by the retractable of dragon wings that comes out of it. Without the scale main Naruto can fly too with his six pair of dragon wings. When Naruto-chan revealed his dragon wings. His grandparents had shocked faces. But he excuses that Drake turned him into a pure-blooded dragon, so it is normal. Dot. Time skip. One year. It's been almost a year Naruto started his training with Susanu, Amaterasu, Tsukiyomi, Yasaka's son Wukong and his family. Much to everyone's surprise Naruto is a fast learner. Yesterday Naruto's son Wukong training in Senjutsu, Taki and some basic fighting skill. Also special training to improve his stamina. To him it was useless because he already has godly stamina. But Drake suggested that it'll balance his body since he was going through a different training session with many gods which he agrees. Lastly, Sun Wukong said he already taught him what he could, but one thing he didn't teach him is hockey. According to him Naruto-chan is just six-year-old if he teach him something like that it'll be too much pressure on his body to he decided to teach him when become 12 years old at least. He also unlocked Juggernaut Drive, but he has completely different chant and it didn't consume life force, while using Dot Drake explained that past hosts could not interfere with his mind since he is a dragon god. Dot. During this period of time he became very close friend of Kunu. They even did some sleepover to each other house. Naruto remembers the day when he wakes up in the morning with one girl on his right side and one girl on the left side using his hands as a pillow, but what surprised him is Kunu wrapped her tails around him. And it was warm. But they only do three to four times in a month. And relationship between Naruto and Office let just say they are partially inseparable now. Sleeping together, eating together, even bathing together. And Drake never missed a chance to tease Naruto about Office while muttering lucky bastard. Naruto started to call Office as Office Heim in front of their family. To his parents, they are so adorable. The day Naruto parents was out of the town. And his grandparents have special meetings so they are not in the house leaving Naruto, Office and some of their trusted guarded house Alno. They knew Office won't let something happen to Naruto, and in the past she proved it many times. Which build trust on his grandparents' eyes for Office. My eyes, since you already completed your training with Sun Wukong how about training with one of my friend? Ask Office while resting her head in Naruto's lap using it as her pillow. Your friend? Office Heim? I don't know you have another friend beside me and Kunu. Ask Naruto while playing with her long black hair. To Office, she loves whenever Naruto-chan touch her. And for Naruto, he likes to play with Office hair. Silly Naruto-chan of course I made another friend last month. We were acquaintance before. Her name is Tiamat Chaos Karma Dragon. The strongest dragon king. Stay away from her if you want to live said Drag aloud while materialized on Ice's left hand. Drag said immediately just by the mention the name of Tiamat. Why is she dangerous? Ask Naruto innocently. Why Drag say something like that it was confusing for Naruto. Yes Naruto-chan, she is she kills each my host whenever she lay an eye on my host I don't know why, but she kinda hate me. Right now I have to deal with the problem that you did in the past. I know you're a very prideful dragon, but just apologize to her when we go meet her okay. But fine. Drake promised Naruto while being mad at him. Great Red heard the whole convo and remembers the time Tiamat, killing Drake host. That's it for him. Just the thought of losing his precious son, he roared so big that the entire dimensional gap started to shake. She won't dare to touch my son, said Great Red via mental link. Drake could sense that he is pissed at the thought of losing his son. Actually, every father will, except certain Lucifer family. And Drake and Office both knew that Great Red is overprotective father. I do not care what her issue with you Drake Chan, but she won't dare to harm my mate else I'll end her, said Office immediately at the thought of losing her mate. It is true she care about her friends, but when it comes to Naruto she didn't look at her opponent whom she is fighting against. Naruto is the one she cares above all. Drake Chan choose to remain silent, knowing both dragon gods protect his host, and thought maybe this time he could get to know why Tiamat hate him so much. Naruto and Office just teleported to the familiar forest. So this is the familiar forest. Say Naruto looking around. Yes, my Naruto-chan, let's go set office and hold Ice's hand and then enter the forest. Few minute walking thry arrive at the cave. Naruto-chan can feel the surge power from the cave. Hello Tiamat I want you to meet someone, said shouted office in her dragonic voice standing in front of the cave. 
From the cave a large blue western dragon is appear in front of them. Its size is about 60 m, this is Chaos Karma Dragon, Tiamat the strongest dragon king. When Tiamat laid eyes on Naruto. She felt great presence in him. She growled and released her energy, ground start to Naruto saw this he didn't like that, and the next thing he did, it shocked the dragon king completely. Naruto released his little bit dragonic energy. The ground start to tremble some rock floating and then break into pieces even tree around him destroyed. Land below his feet is cracked as his crimson hair start to float. Tiamat eyes widened when she felt Ice's power. An unknown location. Oh my, my godson is really powerful huh? Said a handsome young boy, a middle school student with normal features having a well-structured face, with green and black hair which looks more bluish. We'll meet soon my godson. Back to familiar forest. Drag, your move now. Naruto mentally told Drag. Um hi there Tiamat it's good to see you again I think greeted Drag. Tiamat's eyes widened and then saw the crimson haired boy's left hand was shining in red crimson color. Hey Drag how dare you? You dare show yourself it here after so long, Tiamat roared angrily at Naruto as he is the current red dragon emperor. WW wait Tiamat. Stop it right there. Don't try hurt or kill to my current host. You have no chance against him I'm here to apologize. Though I don't really remember what I did. Don't you dare come apologize to me after it's been so long. And. You don't even know why you should apologize. And wait. What do you mean I don't have a chance against a six years old boy? Are you out of your mind Drake? Angrily shouted Tiamat. Though she asked last part in but of confusion and mocking tone. The office decided she has enough and interfered by simply saying he is my mate. Tiamat froze at what she just heard. Office having a mate. And she was trying to kill him. Oh boy. She is in great trouble. And he is the son of Great Red. I think you don't want him to hunt you down. Now that's it. What? She shouted so loud entire forest could hear. And suddenly Tiamat said something that changes everything. I apologize to Naruto-sama for my rude behavior, Tiamat stated calmly. Not wanting to piss off dragon gods. Naruto-sama. No need to call me that just Naruto is fine. Stated Naruto happy. Drag was surprised the sudden change of behavior, but he better choose to remain silent. I can't do that you are the son of Great Red-sama, stated Tiamat. Oh yes. Every dragon respects dragon gods. But Tiamat admired Great Red, and harming his son is, out of the question. We can be friends you know besides I came here to ask to train me I know. I know. I'm a dragon god. But I'm just a child now dot and I want to learn everything this world has to offer declared Naruto. Tiamat just giggled and her body glowing. When the light gone, Tiamat become young girl around Naruto's age. She has long dark blue hair that reaches down to her waist, with two bangs framing her face which reach down to her chest alongside her brown eyes and wears black tank top and skirt above her knee. Imagine Wendy Marvel from Fairy Tale. When Naruto saw her human form. He couldn't help but blushed. Seeing his face, Tiamat smirked at gaining the attention of one the dragon god. Of course Naruto-sama I'll help you train anyhow anytime stated Tiamat happily. By the way Tiamat why do you hate Drake anyway? Naruto asked as he just remembered. He was curious about their history. Tiamat blushed heavily when Naruto asked her that question. Tiamat sighed and spoke while feeling very embarrassed. Drake mumble promise to me mumble we will mumble eggs mumble live mumble happy. I'm sorry for making you wait for this long Tiamat I'm really sorry, but Drake apologized weakly. Ah. Like I care if you apologize anymore. Besides, I'm more interested in your host than you. Naruto-sama Tiamat said last part cheerfully and she walked towards Naruto and gave him a bone-crushing hug. Cough cough. Both Naruto and Tiamat looked towards the source and found Office was standing there while glaring at Tiamat. We should return back to home, said Office still irritated at why Tiamat hugged her mate. Both of them just nodded. Say Tia-chan how about living with us? Asked Naruto, surprising Tiamat and Office. Office is surprised at why her mate asked that. Now Tiamat is blushing like a schoolgirl, this is the first time someone gave her a nickname and called her that. And asking her to live with him. Of course, Naruto-sama, said Tiamat, still blushing. Naruto and Office back to the human world with Tiamat. Now the trio sitting with Ice's grandparents. While explaining who is the blue hair girl and why she is here. You know what? I give up. Every time I think I have this kid figured out, he does something else. Said Max in annoyance. Luna just giggled. Later that night, Naruto and Office was sitting in that couch while watching TV. His grandparents were discussing about Ice's training in another room. Then Ice's parents enter the room with sad expression, her mother face was like she was about to cry. Naruto didn't understand what happened to them, then his eyes laid on a blonde girl standing with them whose eyes was watered. They immediately recognized who is she. Ah-chan-tao-chan-kurumi-chan what hap? 
Before he could finish his sentence he was tackled in a tight hug of Kurumi, and she started to cry. Black sob feathers sob, sob killed sob sob kach and sob, replied Kurumi while sobbing. Naruto was patting his back gently. But when he heard what she said he froze. Black feathers. Must be fallen angels killed. Kachan. Wait. Did she mean Rozoba-chan? Fallen angels killed Rozoba-chan or something. Thought Naruto. Now Naruto can understand why his parents, especially her mother, are showing this type of reaction. He gathered his courage and looked towards his Tao-chan and asked what happened. Tao-chan. Someone attacked Rosan and Kurumi-chan and trying to kill them, they almost killed Rosan she is now in hospital now, but she is in coma and Kurumi is going to live with us from now, please take care of her Naruto. You are her only friend. You both almost grow up together she is more comfortable around you said Kai with sad and requesting tone. You can leave Rumi-chan to me Tao-chan I'll take care of her declared Naruto while hugging Kurumi tighter. His parents nodded dot. When his grandparents and Tiamat entered that they saw Naruto hugging a blonde girl, while his parents have a sad face, Kai explained what happened to his parents, he didn't include the black feathers parts, to him it's Kurumi's mental trauma. When his parents left the room, Naruto mentioned black feathers part which shocked both his grandparents and Tiamat. They already know what black feathers meant. When Kurumi heard Naruto mention black feathers part while having a serious face. She hugged Naruto-chan tighter. Thank you mumble thank you mumble for mumble, leaving me mumble mumbled Kurumi while digging her head in Ice's chest. Of course I believe you Rumi-chan said Naruto now patting her head. Naruto didn't want to hide anything from her. And doctor saying dot dot she had mental trauma. HW had enough. Naruto take her to his room and decided to tell her everything aboid him and supernatural world except about Great Red. So let me get straight they are fallen angels who killed my mother. And you turn into a dragon. Well that thing on your left hand is a dragon asked Kurumi. She didn't believe what her Naruto said until he showed her his boosted gear. I know you'll call me freak, and Yuna dot dot before he could finish his sentence he was again tackled in a tight hug of Kurumi. I won't do such things I even say thanks to that dragon for saving your life Naruto-chan, and you aren't a freak don't call yourself something like that. That made Naruto happy that he could tell his childhood friend dot dot most of truths about himself, and she is okay with it heck she even thanking Drake for saving his life. They just hugged each other and slept on that position. Next morning. When Naruto-chan woke up, he found something heavy on him dot dot, when he saw what was it he was starting to blush over him, Kurumi is sleeping peacefully. Office is sleeping on his right side using his hand as a pillow, but when he turned to his left side, he could not believe what he saw sleeping on his left, is Tiamat using her left hand as a pillow as well dot. Unknown to him last night office and Tiamat had a little chat office let Tiamat join Naruto's harem dot dot, and she will remain as alpha she had the same kind of talk with Kunu six months ago, which Kunu agreed to dot Naruto-chan swore he could listen to Drag mumbling something lucky bastard. Suddenly someone opens the door and enters the room. Naruto-chan saw his parents come inside his room. His parents' eyes widened at what they saw of Naruto's bed. Kai just thumps up while showing his perverted smile dot well that earns him another smack in his head. Ow. That hurts, complained Kai. Hitomi just ignored it. Hearing that sound Tiamat woke up, seeing Naruto-chan already woke. Good morning M-A-S-T-R. Unknown to her, Ice's parents were still in the room, and they heard it. Crystal clear. Naruto didn't know how his parents were going to react. His parents were shocked to the core when they heard a blue hair girl was sleeping with their son and calling his son master. I thumbs up this time with both hands still having the shocked expression on his face. Hitomi couldn't take it, and she fainted. At breakfast table. Oh god, what kind of dream was that? Said Hitomi while holding her head with her hand. What happened to Hitomi-chan? Asked Luna in a concerned voice. Nothing mother a blue-haired girl calling my Sachi as master while laying next to him, Hitomi said in an embracing tone and with little blushed on her face. Maybe it isn't a dream, said Luna, knowing a certain blue-haired girl dot. Before Hitomi can ask what she meant that certain blue hair with Naruto office, Kurumi, is coming towards her direction. Naruto already knows this is going to be a long day. His grandpa Max excuses that little girl is his friend's granddaughter and his goddaughter. And his girl's members died in a tragic accident, leaving her alone. Hearing what Max said, Hitomi softens and embraces Tiamat in a monthly hug. The day entire household servants are busy decorating the mansion. Today is their young master's birthday. This is the first birthday he is going to celebrate with his grandparents. They only sends gift before. But today he can celebrate with his grandparents. His grandparents were more excited today. Yeah they could send only gifts to their lovely grandson they never attend any occasion related to their grandson. So they decided it's time to make up dot. 
When Naruto awake he could see his room decorated and room filled with balloons, and his grandparents, girls and his parents were standing in front of him. He wonder why it is the first morning he woke up alone, after office joined Uzumaki household. Actually he forget today is his birthday. Happy birthday Naruto-chan they said in unison. Now he realized what is today. Sometimes he is so dense. Thank you everyone. Dot dot for your love Naruto replied. Dot. Bed up sleepy head go take a shower and come downwards. Said his mother with a warm smile. And left the room his grandparents and girls did the same. In dimensional gap. A certain red dragon was creating something. That something covered in bright crimson light, when light faded there are chess pieces, but in crimson color, not only that it have two queen unlike one. And that's interesting. I never thought it LL have two queen pieces. Said very amused dragon at his creation. Seems like your birthday present is ready my little dragon god. Back to human world. After spending long birthday party Naruto is now standing at his balcony while peacefully looking at moon. Beautiful isn't it? Naruto heard the comment and look at the direction where the comment came from. Naruto smiled seeing his father. That his father and knew what he was cut off in middle when his father embrace him and a fatherly hug. Look how much you've grown up, my little dragon god said Great Red while patting his son's head. Before Naruto could say anything. His father opened a personal dimension and brought a box. And give it to Naruto while saying, happy birthday. What did his father? Your birthday gift to what? And why don't you check it yourself? Naruto opened the boy and saw chess pieces, but there were two queens. Naruto thought what it could be. Dot, but when it realized what it is. Dot, he looked at his father with shocked face. Is it what I'm thinking it is? P.S. It is my little dragon god. But why there are two queens? Don't know don't want to know. Let just say dot dot that's make it unique. I guess. How could I use them? It took 30 minutes Great Red to make fully understand about it. Dot. After that Naruto-chan thanked him, while saying it is the best birthday gift he ever get. That made Great Red very happy. And soon he returned back to Dimensional Gap, while Naruto get downward to get office and tell her about current development. Naruto explained office and Tiamat what he got from his father. Well that shocked Tiamat, but office didn't even seem to surprised. She knows Great Red can do anything he wants. Unknown to them Kurumi heard half of the convo. She heard everything except who is Ice's father. When Naruto-chan sensed someone was spying on him. He guard up hand. Come out. Whoever are you? Said demanded Ice. The blonde girl came out from the shadow. Naruto-chan realized who is she. Rumi-chan. What are you doing? He was cut off when Kurumi placed a finger on his mouth. I have a request Naruto-chan. What it is Rumi-chan? Let me join your peerage. Yes, she was already told about peerage before by Naruto. Are you sure? I may Naruto was again cut off when Kurumi placed a hand on his mouth. I should get used to it. Don't know how many times I was cut off before finishing thought Naruto and signed. Thus do it Naruto chan or you don't want me in your peerage. Asked Kurumi while making puppy face. Very well. Lay down. She did what he asked her to do. Suddenly, bright crimson magic circle surrounded her. In the middle of the magic circle, there is a huge dragonic face. I, Naruto Uzumaki, one of the three dragon god, hereby ordering Kurumi Uzumaki to join me as my queen and serve me eternally. Queen Peace went inside Kurumi, completely accepted her. And two pair of dragon wings burst out of her back. Seeing that Tiamat couldn't herself but want to his queen too. I'm next said Tiamat cheerfully. Shocking Naruto and office. Tiamat are you sir again he was cut off when Tiamat hugged him. Office just glared at her. Did I do something I shouldn't? Why the heck no one let me finish? thought Naruto in annoyance. Very well, welcome to the family. The AE Tiamat cheered while jumping. No one suspect her she is the Chaos Karma Dragon, Tiamat. Naruto repeat the whole ritual. But there is one thing left to do, now how he gonna tell his grandparents about whole situation and turning Kurumi into a dragon. Yes. His peerage member will become a dragon. Not just a dragon. Each member will get ultimate class ability in every department just by joining his peerage. That's how Great Red created it. If they train enough they can become Satan class in no time. But a dragon king is said to be par with Satan class. So it's no big deal for dragons, but for everyone except them. Dot dot it was a great deal. Just tell them who gifted you that and you don't know why he did that. Just tell them maybe he wanted to see a dragon peerage. That could be work. Thanks Drag. You're a life savior. But before he could do anything a holy purple flame burst out from Kurumi shocking everyone except office. Dot. I did not know you have that said office as she smiled widely. So you know what it is Office Chan? Asked Naruto and Kurumi in unison. That is a sacred gear Kurumi Chan, Incinerate Anthem, one of the 13 Longinus. And it is known for its purple flame. The Incinerate Anthem is considered as one of the three holy relics alongside the true Longinus and Sephiroth Grawlgrawl. It is the holy cross on which Christ was crucified. 
explained Office with an amused smile. Now it is more complicated for Naruto to explain the whole situation to his grandparents. Why you have what and you did what with Kurumi-chan? Asked Max and Luna in unison when Naruto told them the whole situation. His grandparents could not believe what they are hearing from their grandson. Their jaw hit the ground when Naruto showed them his pieces. You mean to telling us that, Great Red, the strongest being in the existence gave you that as your birthday present asked Max still in his shocked face. Suddenly he chuckled and said it's good job I already give up to figured you out kid with saying that he started to laughing. Luna just signed. She looked at her grandson and said, since you can have peerage you should only add powerful members and don't take advantage of it. Advantage. She meant harem, Naruto-chan said Max with perverted smile. Yeah. That earned him a smack on his head. It was good that room they were talking was soundproofs. Also Naruto only introduced Kurumi as his queen, keeping Tiamat identity as his queen secret for right moment. Wheel, she also have incinerate anthem, grandpa. WW what, she have what? Naruto knew it was going to be long night. Naruto explained everything to his grandparents. In the end his grandparents offered to train her too. Next morning. Morning sunlight hit Naruto's bedroom. When he woke up he found himself in same position. It's like everyday routine for them to slept with him, not that way. Both queen made excuse that our queen should always be her king's side. Which Naruto can't argue. An unknown location. So my godson is now going to have a peerage. More specially a dragon peerage, huh? Said a handsome young boy. Looks like you are going to make your own legacy can't wait. To see what you are going to do when you grown up and introduce yourself in supernatural world, but I think it's time to meet you personally, my godson oh my. I didn't even gift you anything on your birthday. How silly of me time to correct my mistake. I think you gonna like this, said the same boy while holding a sword. Chapter 4. Godfather and Descendant of the Fallen Devil King. It's been six months since Kurumi and Tiamat joined Naruto's peerage and became his queens. Tiamat personally started to train Kurumi, since her identity is a secret even from the Shinto faction. Beside Tiamat, Ice's grandparents also offered to train her, which Kurumi gladly accepted. Kurumi and Kunu also get along with each other very well. Besides Naruto's grandparents and girls, Yusaka is the only one who was told about Kurumi being a dragon and having incinerate anthem, much to Yusaka's surprise. Not only Naruto managed to gain attention of the strongest being in the existence, but he also has given Naruto the dragon pieces. Yes. That is what Naruto named his evil pieces. Well Tiamat being Naruto's queen is secret even to her. Naruto's grandparents is now getting worried about them, since Naruto and girls now only were considering about their training and to aim to become more and more strong, that wasn't the part worried them, and of course they were doing it excellently, but they were forgetting about the outside world odd, and homeschooling was helping either. We have to do something about it soon, Max said Luna in concerned voice while drinking tea. Yeah, you're right, I guess I have an idea that'll work said Max, understanding her wife problem. W what it is. Tell me. Maybe I can help you with that said almost demanded Luna. Also stopping to drink her tea. How about we send them to tour around the city? Also summer is coming so we can also send them to summer camp where they easily can interact with other children of their age. Said Max, hoping that his idea will work. That's great Max I think I should reward you, said a very amused Luna, at her husband plan for their lovely grandson. Oh really? Max almost shouted in happiness for getting a reward. Only if your plan works said Luna devilishly before giggling at her husband's childish nature. So it's decided, but how are we going to approach them? Asked Luna when she suddenly remember how their lovely grandson is going to react when they told them about certain tour and summer camping idea. We don't have to worry about it you know. We are his grandparents, grinned Max while saying last part. Luna catch at what her husband wants to say and grin too. I see. You called us, grandpa said Naruto while entering his grandparents' room with office, Kurumi, Tiamat and Kunu. Ah uh, yes. Naruto-chan come sit with us and girls you too we have something to say said Luna when she heard Naruto's voice. Naruto and the girls nodded and did as it was directed. So Naruto, trying to start the conversation but cut off in middle when his grandpa is starting to say something. I know. I know. You all are confused why I called you in the middle of your training. Right. Said Max before signed. They all nodded. Well kiddo you are all just trained all day cutting off the outside world that is not good. Even Kai-chan and Hitomi-chan were complaining about that Naruto when you were in Kuo you mom or dad took you out every weekend. Said Max in serious voice. Well Naruto and rest scratched their heads in confusion at what he was trying to say why he didn't tell them directly. Naruto-chan. What your grandpa wants to say how about you show Kurumi-chan some interesting and famous side of Kyoto I defiantly can say rest of girls also want to tag along. Said Luna try to give another reason while wanting the same result. 
Which also surprised Max, who just chuckled at her wife's unique way to dealing with situation. Rest of girls have different thoughts, but answers were same. Kurumi wanted to tour around Kyoto which she didn't do it yet, and doing with her Naruto-chan which only she can dream about now happening. Office just wants to spend time with her Naruto-kun, or should I say naruto Koya? that's another nickname she gave to Naruto. Gunu blushed heavily to the thought of wandering around Kyoto while holding Naruto-kun hand. Tiamat just smirked when she the sea faces of girls are getting red. Well, I think girls love to cling with ice tease Tiamat despite her size, she loves to tease anyone heck she even walked in bath when Naruto was inside. Let just say it take almost another hour to complete his bath. When girls heard what Tiamat said. They blushed heavily. Cough cough. So I take it you all agree T Luna was cut off when Kurumi react. Yes. 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 Of course. Said Kurumi cheerfully. Well Luna just giggled. So it's decided but since we are busy. Some household servants will accompany you. Max said with a serious tone and try already know those aren't just household servants, they are much more they are highly trained bodyguard. Grandpa I think I should tell Ami one chan about my peerage and Rumi-chan being a dragon and my queen, said Naruto making a serious face. Naruto started to call Amaterasu, Ami one chan Even she liked it, whenever Naruto called her Ami one Kurumi blushed redder than Tomato when Naruto called her my queen. She always liked when Naruto shows affection towards her, more especially when he used her name with my. Do you know what can happen after that? Max asked in a deep serious voice. I know grandpa, I can take care of it dot dot, saying that I'm a pure-blooded dragon, and Great Red wants to see a dragon peerage. So he gifted me dragon pieces. Said Naruto while showing equal seriousness. Luna nodded in agreement. Well girls are thinking what they can do to make Naruto mood lighter. Then make sure you can tell her whole situation positively. I will grandpa. I will. Okay then. How about we go out for dinner tonight? Suggested Luna. She knows that she can't go with them tomorrow, and that'll make Naruto a little bit unhappy. Yes. All five persons replied in unison. Then I should invite yusaka san too. Said Luna. That made Kunu more happy. She then told Kai and Hitomi about tonight dinner program, which made both of them smile too. It's been a really while when we went out for dinner, said Kai looking at Hitomi, while thinking about when Naruto asked them to take him out for dinner. Yeah we used to go with Naruto-chan, said Hitomi while remembering the same thought. Today's dinner is going to bring some good memories. Said Kai childishly. Our Naruto is growing up so fast said Hitomi, while comparing Ice's childish behavior and current. Still he have his childish acts, but he also have his serious behavior. At the restaurant. They made their way inside and were greeted by a waiter immediately. He bowed, then said, Hello, you are Mr. Yuzumaki and his family, correct? Max nodded. Right this way please. He led them through the restaurant to a table towards the back that was a bit more isolated than the others. They stopped at a rectangular table with one woman seated on one side. There was a woman who was appearing to twenty-something. I see. You already arrived Hayasaka sent said Max. After Kunu and Naruto became friends. Or you can say too much close friends. Their family started to treat each other children like its own. How could I miss an invite from my daughter's another family, and since I had already completed today's work at afternoon. I have nothing to do this evening, said Yusaka, as she stood up from her chair when she them coming. Ah Chan, it's good to see you here, I think you're going to miss it due to your work, said Kunu cheerfully. Bigula, how could I miss a dinner with your future husband and his family, Yusaka muttering Kunu ears, making her face go, red of embracement. When at last all of the introductions were done, Yusaka returned to her seat on one side of the table, while the Yuzumaki family took their seats including Kunu. The waiter returned a couple minutes later and took everyone's order. When he left, there was an awkward silence as each person waited for someone else to speak. So I heard you all children are going out said asked Hitomi. Hi Kachan, we are said Naruto. Have fun then said Hitomi with a smile. The rest of the evening proceeded similarly as they talked a little bit with each other. Also, the food was so damn good. Naruto already get ready for their day, but the girls are still busy in getting ready. When he saw the girls come he was starting to blush. The office was wearing light blue color gothic fashion dress. Well Kunu was wearing white shirt and orange leggings. Kurumi was just wearing purple t-shirt and black miniskirt. Tiamat was wearing blue short jeans pants and red t-shirt with a dragon mark on it. But the girls saw what Naruto was wearing, and they blushed too. Naruto just wore white t-shirt with black unbuttoned shirt and blue jeans. Now they started to have fun while enjoying the view. Can we go to Fushimi Inari I heard about it many times, asked Kurumi. While remembering what she saw about Fushimi Inari and TV. Fushimi Inari. So my cute queen wants visit Fushimi Inari I see. Why not? And it's one stop away from the Kyoto station. Said Naruto truthfully. 
Barumi blushed heavily when Naruto called her my cute queen. To her joining his peerage as queen was the best thing she did to her life. Well rest of girls just narrowed their eyes. The Nari station was one stop away from Kyoto station, and after getting off they were able to see the visiting road leading to Fushimi and Nari. They aren't alone. There are four household servants with them. With excitement, they passed through the main entrance without issue. Walking further along, they reached the main hall. Continuing, they found the steps leading up the Inari mountain. They took photos as they advanced and began their next challenge of climbing the mountain path through a thousand tori. They were checking out some little stores at the rest stop halfway while continuing up the challenge that was Inari mountain. Oh wow, what a great view. Yes, too wonderful. Awesome. Amazing. Stunning. Those were the first response from the children when they saw the scenery of the Fushimi Inari mountainside. After visiting Fushimi Inari they head back to home. I take it you guys have fun today? Asked a feminine voice. When they looked at the voice source they immediately found Bachan was standing there with a warm smile. Yes we did Bachan, and we visited Fushimi Inari too we did lots of things today we all before Naruto, could he was cut off in middle this time by his own Bachan. Easy Naruto-chan I know you wants to say everything you did today but first, go and get fresh, said Luna. Naruto and rest of girls just nodded. Kunu wasn't there. On the way back to home, they already drop her to her house safely. After getting fresh and telling the little story about today and having dinner, Office and Tiamat went to another room for discussing about the new training program, since Naruto went for a walk around the mansion, Kurumi decided to tag along with Office and Tiamat. After dinner, Naruto decided to go for a short walk before going to bed. Suddenly Naruto felt a tremendous amount of goldly ore nearby dot, and he looked towards it. What he found, there is a boy. It's a boy who looks like a middle school student with black-green hair which looks bluish. He has well-structured face. At that moment their eyes meet he understand by instinct that the alert level inside him went up to the max right away. Naruto would have freak out at the amount of divinity the boy was showing if he wasn't the son of Great Red. And living with office make it easy to him to calm his instincts. Who are you? Asked Naruto while analyzing the boy with his eyes. M.O.U. I'm hurt you really don't know who I am. I think you remember me. Said the boy with a fake hurt tone. But I never meet you in past how am I going to identify you? Said Naruto-chan with a frown. You don't remember after all I'm the one who left you at shrine where Yuzumaki's took you in. As he said, Naruto froze where he was standing because only his parent and grandparents knew about adoption. No one else. Well it is true he told Kurumi adopted. And her reaction was mix. Flashback begin. Naruto and Kurumi were sitting on the grass at the garden, watching sunset. It is so beautiful Naruto-kun said Kurumi as she lay her head on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto just looked at her. Her blonde hair was so close that Naruto was starting to smell it. Na, Rumi-chan, I have to say something very important which I didn't tell you during the time when I was telling you about Supernatural, said Naruto with a serious and nervous face. Kurumi just looked at him and simple asked what it is Naruto-kun. I I'd say about me said issue with a hesitation. Kurumi can easily read that her Naruto-kun was a sishiate, so she simple place her both hands on his both cheek and said, What it is Naruto-kun you know you can tell me everything I promise, I never tell any of your secret to anyone, said Kurumi with a caring voice. I I it's about I'm adopted. Naruto then told her about how his parents found him at shrine. Kurumi had mixed reaction on her face. Her face was showing the reaction of anger, sympathy and relief anger for the person who dared to abandon her Naruto-kun sympathy for Naruto-kun, for going through that type of situation at that little age. But she found, extremely relieved that her Naruto-kun isn't blood related to her. You aren't going to treat me any differently Rumi-chan. You still considering me as your family aren't you Rumi-chan? Asked Naruto nervously. When Kurumi heard what her Naruto-kun was asking she found, she didn't say a word whole time, and that's why Naruto-kun was asking something like that. Next time Naruto found himself tackled in tight hug of Kurumi, and he lose his balance and fell on the ground with Kurumi. Don't say something like that I'll never do such thing you more than that to me, said Kurumi while digging her head into Ice's chest. Naruto couldn't help and hug her tighter. Flashback ends. WW what? What do you mean Boo left you at shrine and how do you know in first place? Tell me who are you? What do you want from me? Ask demanded question Naruto, with glaring the boy with both of his eyes. Tuckle easy there, godson of mine said the boy. GG godson. I have godparents Naruto nearly yelled at the boy who just chuckled again. Yes you have I'm standing in front of you said the boy. Why you are my godfather? Why didn't father tell me about this? And you are asked question Naruto suspiciously. Oh my I didn't give you my name well, I'm Shiva, god of destruction from Hindu mythology. Your godfather. Said the boy, now identified as Shiva. Naruto just looked at him with shocked expression at what he was just told. He was godson of Shiva. 
He already know who Shiva is, he is one of the Tramurti and the god of destruction of the Hindu mythology. He is ranked at the higher ranks of the top 10 strongest beings in the world. Shiva, the strongest god after dragon gods you are. I'm that Shiva. Don't be like that you think your life is normal. Let me remind you you are the son of Great Red, husband or maid of office, current Red Dragon Emperor, or should I say strongest Red Dragon Emperor, also you are the only one who has Dragon Peerage. What? You Dragon Peerage info. Actually I was the one who suggest your father to gift you something like that. Said Shiva when he saw shocked face of Naruto when he mentioned about Peerage. So he decided better to clear up the things. I guess so but not every day you found out who is your godfather as Shiva my godfather I couldn't control myself. Said Naruto relaxing when he saw the what his godfather wanted to say. Still, you didn't tell me. Why am I not informed about it? It was my decision when your father revealed himself to you he asked me to do the same, but I refused I told him when I'll reveal myself in time, and I think no one this world knows that, me and your father are friends, even office have no idea about it. Time? Well, I want revealed myself when you already set your paths for the future like currently you chose to become strongest dragon god, even want to surpass your own father. And where are you getting at? With choosing your path. To put it simple I don't want you become a evil berserk dragon god, and I can see you set yourself a quite admirable goal. You know Anne and I want to help you with it. Help me? How? Hey, do you forget who I am? Come on. I can help you with your training you know. Really? You help me with it? Now Naruto have star in his both eyes who wouldn't. Training with god of destruction. Of course. I'm your godfather after all. But you'll have to wait until you reach 11 of your age then we can start. Naruto get little bit disappointed, but it quickly get over it when he realized his godfather is right about it. You are right said issue with a little bit sad voice. Don't be sad I think this will lighten your mood, said Shiva as he just raised his right arm and something began to glow briefly in his hand. When it died down, a sword was now in his hand. It was a silver-colored broadsword with a blade resembling that of Akanda's blade and was around the same length as Isis. It possessed an oval-shaped golden guard, a triangular rain guard, and had a two-handed handle wrapped in brown bandages with a grey ring pommel at the bottom of the handle. The sword, you can see, my godson, is Chandrahas, the invincible sword. Naruto already know what is Chandrahas. It is an invincible sword that Shiva once had given to Ravana as a gift. It has the ability to deliver damage and destruction that cannot be repaired or healed from its destroyed state and weakens the power of objects that it damages too. Shiva handed the sword to Naruto. Naruto took it and sealed it in his one of personal dimension pocket. Arigato Shiva Ajisen. I take it you already know about the sword. Hai Ajisen. I read about it in Hindu mythology the only sword in Hindu mythology. If I'm right. Yes you are it is now I think you should return back to your home it's almost an hour. I think you are right again by the way, can we mean Naruto was again cut off in middle of talking when Shiva, starting to answer his questions. Yeah we can meet again, and to the answer to your previous questions your father task asked me to get you into Yuzumaki household. Said Shiva, teleporting away from that place. Naruto returned back to his house and now laying on his bed while thinking about today's little talk with his Ajisen. And then he found himself in dream world again. I take it you finally met your Ajisen. I still can't believe this having Shiva as your godfather. Yes father. We have a little chat today said Naruto, completely ignoring Drake comment. Well here, you can use the sword in real world you can use wooden sword of same length and weight to practice. And here you can use it freely how's that sound? Just perfect. And I have knowledge of different types of sword art. Time skip. It's been a month, Naruto started training with wooden sword. Much to everyone's surprise because he never show interest in sword. And today is the day when he is going to tell Amiwani about his peerage dot. Training with Amaterasu, not just build his body or magical arsenal, he and Amaterasu become close to Naruto, starting to call her Ami Wani san then Ami Wani chan, but now he ends up with just Wani chan, and Amaterasu loved it whenever Naruto called her Wani chan. She started to care about Naruto deeply. Unknown to her, she is also starting to develop some feelings for him. Wani chan, I have something to tell you and it is important, said Naruto with a nervous expression. What is it? Naruto chan. I have a peerage. The Matarasu just stare at him like she saw a ghost. Well, Naruto-chan, can you repeat what you just said I think I heard something you having a peerage. Said a Matarasu hopping she must misheard of it. You heard correctly one chan I have a peerage said Naruto with hesitation and a nervous expressions. The Matarasu froze completely now. Only one thing comes in her mind now. How? I can't sense any angel or devil energy within you. Naruto-chan, tell me no one force you to join any side tell me Naruto-chan tell your one chan everything, and don't you dare to hide anything from one chan said Amaterasu while shaking Naruto. Calm down. Calm down. 
When he chan said Naruto while maintaining his balance, Amaterasu really shook him hard. Oh. Sorry Naruto-chan did one e chan hurt you? Asked Amaterasu in concerned voice, totally forgetting about his peerage. I'm fine, one e chan and to answer to your question I am still a dragon, and my peerage will not be angel or devil peerage, it will be dragon peerage my dragon piece turn people into a dragon, just like a devil or angel peerage. Said Naruto truthfully. Dragon? I don't know there is a dragon peerage too. Asked Amaterasu with curious face. Because, I'm the first person who have it actually and before you ask where I get it, it is gift from someone Naruto said. You're the first person to have it. A and a gift. So you aren't going to tell one chan about him or her? Asked Amaterasu, she asked last part with a cute pout. I think you know him one chan hh his nn name I I is great red. Said Naruto-chan with little hesitation, he didn't know how her one chan going to react. Great red. How? Why the hell he did that? Naruto-chan. Are you sure? You're lying to one chan don't you dare to lie to one chan don't you like one chan Said Amaterasu, with little bit hurt tone. No. I like you one chan He just told me that after seeing Devil Angel Peerage, he wants to see a Dragon Peerage. That's it one chan said Naruto, while he hugged Amaterasu in tight embrace. Amaterasu just smiled and hugged him back. Naruto and girls are now heading back to home after having lunch out. They have a plan for lunch. Suddenly a boy of short blonde hair and gray eyes collided into him. Well it was the boy's fault. Look, where you are going said the boy with arrogant and harsh voice. Actually, you are the one who collided into me Naruto shot back. The girls just glared at the boy. Who care about you? Hey girls how about we go to park? The boy said arrogantly. Naruto and girls decided to ignore the boy and start walking to their home. Seeing, he was ignored the just grab the hand of nearest girl, that happened to be Kurumi Kurumi just glared at him, leave my hand. I'm due before the boy could finish, his face met with a fist, and that happens to be Ice's fist. The punch sent him flying two meter in the air, and then he fell on ground. First you collided into me and rather saying sorry, you lectured me then you dare to hold Rumi-chan's hand said Naruto, oh man he was pissed off. The fist was so hard for the boy that his two to three teeth came out from his mouth just seeing his face you can say that his nose had broken too. Why why you dare to hit me don't you know who I am? I'm Genshiro Saji and I before he could finish his sentence someone kick him dot dot and that this time it was Kurumi who kicked him. I don't give a damn about who the hell are you only Naruto-chan can hold my hands, no one else you got that little piece of crap threatened Kurumi. The kick was so hard the boy full again and start coughing. Naruto blushed heavily when Kurumi claimed that only he can hold her hands. But it didn't lesser his anger towards the boy. Suddenly two figures appeared there both of them middle age. One of them is female and another one is male. If Naruto has to guess he probably can say both of them is husband and wife, and more importantly the way they looked at the boy he can guess, maybe parents of the boy. Saji Saji Chan are you okay? Who did this to you? Asked a female to the boy in caring tone. Ah Chan said Saji walk pointing towards Kurumi and Naruto. Seeing his son pointing towards a boy and a girl, Saji father decided to act. You, boy and girl, hit my son? Asked the male in serious and angry voice. Yes, we did said Naruto without any hesitation. Your son, first collided into us without apologizing, he started to lecture us, then he dared to hold my hand this time the one who said is Kurumi. Both Mr. and Mrs. Genshiro shocked at what his son done Saji's parents just stare at their son, who just hide his eyes. Sam's father dangerously glared at his son. But his mother looked at the girl to apologize for her son behavior, but before she could say anything Naruto spoke. I'm apologizing if you find her tone harsh, said Naruto while pointing towards Kurumi. No. 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 If anyone fault here is our son so it will be us who apologizing, not you generally any girl will hit a boy who dare to touch her without her permission, even I think I should give him some lessons about how to show respect, said Saji's mother with apologizing voice. Yes. You are right dear we should give Saji a lessons about respect in the meantime I apologized for his behavior. You don't have to apologize for his before Naruto could finish he heard someone calling his name. Naruto-sama, Naruto-sama. He and rest of them looked towards the source and found two of his household servants were there. Naruto-sama, are you okay? You know it is getting dark and you are also being late your parents and grandparents were worried about you and girls, so they sent us to look for you. Yes. We are fine wake-san, Zeno-san you don't need to worry about us. We just run into someone said Naruto politely. Saji's parents were shocked at how Naruto was interacting with them and showing the amount of respect. The two person were already in usual servant's outfit that Saji's parents easily coughed. But then Saji father noticed H mark on the outfit and tensed, then looked at Naruto and asked, are you perhaps related to Uzumakis? Hi. 
I'm Naruto Uzumaki, son of Kai and Hitomi Uzumaki, grandson of Max and Luna Uzumaki introduced Naruto to them who were in shock. Saji's father about to say something but one of servants interjected. Young master, we should head back to home it is getting dark. Hi. Hi. Zero-san said Naruto and turned to Saji's parents and said, it's pleasure to meet you and walked with the girls, while well, servants just followed them. I think Tu-san is not going to like this, said Saji's father looking at his wife and then his son angrily. While well, Saji's mother still has shocked face. She knew what Yuzumakis mean to her father-in-law. Definitely. Father-in-law is already mad at Saji's rude and arrogant behavior, and it didn't help when he received a complaint call from his school. Let just hope we can calm him somehow also give Saji a lesson about how to behave, said Saji's mother, who also glaring at her son. Which I highly doubt and Saji deserve it, said Saji's father, who knew how his father going to react when he finds out what Saji did to Yuzumaki's hair. Saji's mother just nodded in agreement. Time skip. Dinner table. Naruto is now having dinner with his parents, grandparents and girls. So Naruto-chan, why you and girls late today? You know we got worried and you never late before care to tell us, asked Hitomi. It's not his fault Obachan it's a boy who collided into us and dare to hold my hand said Kurumi, she said last part in a way if she the boy again she will definitely gonna kill him. Just hearing that Max and Kai just looked at Naruto who just nodded and decided to find the boy who dare to touch one of their family member. Well Hitomi and Luna eyes are getting very dark of anger. Who the hell is dare to touch my niece shouted Hitomi, and it took 15 minutes to Kai and Luna for clam her down. Well, when Naruto Koi punched him he about to give his full name, but Kurumi-chan kicked me so all we catch is his last name, and it was Genshiro or something, said Tiamat who decided to answer. Now his grandparents have little bit shocked reaction that the boy is the part of Genshiro's. And decided when he visit them he'll going to have a chat about this incident. Naruto-chan, good job for protecting Kurumi-chan and Kurumi-chan you two for kicking him I'll be damned if I let something happen to you while my little sister is in coma, praised Hitomi to both kids while muttering last part to herself. The rest of dinner went peacefully. Currently Yusaka was training both Kurumi and her daughter. Yusaka was teaching them how to control their flame. While Kunu has similar fire flame like her mother, Kurumi have both purple flame of incinerate anthem and can breath fire due to turning into a dragon. So she have to undergo different type training just for control her flame and use it. The amount of potential Kurumi was showing surprised both Naruto's grandparents and Yusaka. She is already can take a low ultimate. Seeing that, Kunu asked her mother to train her more harder. She is now can easily take in high class. That greatly surprised her mother that even she wasn't that powerful when she was same as Kunu currently is. She also asked Tiamat to give her some basic combat, also some physical training. What boosted her power extremely was Office Snake. With office power combined with her fire, it become deathly fire. According to office it can destroy in high ultimate class with just one hit. But it consume lot of stamina. So office advised her to use it when it is absolutely necessary. Alright girls that's it for today said Yusaka while passing water bottles to them. Hi. Kachan Yusaka-san, said Kunu and Kurumi. Hey girls called a male voice. And both of them knew who's that voice belonged to. Naruto kun you here? Both girls asked in unison. I think you already forget today's date I think I should I give you two hint lunch out, said Naruto-chan childishly. Both girls look at each other and remember they are going to have lunch out with others. Thanks for remind us about it said both girls in unison and hugged him Naruto blushed heavily. Cough cough. The trio looked at the source and found office was standing there. Naruto Koi, I need to show you something in Kunu and Kurumi, you both better get ready, office stated simply. Hi office chan fist chan both girls again said in unison, while Naruto-chan just followed her. Naruto and girls are walking to the restaurant where their lunch is waiting for them. Suddenly they felt a presence they didn't felt in long time. Evil said Naruto and Kunu in unison. Kunu get close to Naruto and hold his hand. Naruto then noticed that Kunu's hands were hold his own hands. It will be alright, Kunu. I'm here for you. Kunu placed her hands on Naruto's. Ice, please stay by my side. I will always be with you, Kunu. Always. Promise. I promise, Kunu. I promise that I will stay with you forever. There is some tears on her eyes, but before anyone can see it, she dig her head in Naruto's chest and hugged him in tight bone crushing hug. It's okay Kunu now let's go and check what's going on. They aren't allowed here said Naruto, while everyone nodded. The silver hair girl, who appeared to same age as Naruto, was very unhappy with her life. Her father never came to talk to her as he thought she was some kind of a monster and was largely absent her whole life. He used to beat her just to let out his frustration. Her grandfather was an abusive too who used to beat her in the name of, since she learned that she had a long eye in a sacred gear, divine dividing, host of Albion. Rizavum Live and Lucifer ruthlessly trained her in everything possible. 
he didn't give a damn about her situations. She had ran off from her home one weeks ago and was undering in the streets of remembered what had happened earlier and tears came to her eyes. Her parents was killed by Rizavim in front of her. She didn't care about her father, but her mother was everything to her. She promised that day she will kill him for taking away her mother from her. Now, she was running four devils were chasing after her. Suddenly they surrounded her. Dot. I will just kill you, and Lord Lucifer will reward us. Nah. Nah. Why not we sold her since she is a Lucifer will get high price for her. We should kill her, Lord Lucifer will reward us more than we will get after sold her. Let's just killed her already. The silver hair girl looked at them with horrified face as they were ready to kill her. Then they combined their demonic power and put it together, forming a large demonic ball and sent towards her. She closed her, accepting her fate, tears were running from her eyes. She knew even if she used divide. It'll not enough to completely stop it. But it never come. She opened her eyes saw a boy around same age as her, he has crimson hair, just stopped the ball of demonic energy by just as one of his finger like it was nothing. And then destroyed it. The four devils had their jaw on ground. A boy just destroyed an ultimate class attack at just like it was nothing. The silver hair girl looked at him in awe. You know. You disgusting creature don't know how to treat a cute girl, said the boy with crimson hair. Don't get cocky Brad, said one of the devil as he tried to attack him, but before he can attack him a black energy beam hit him and turn him into ash. Three of the remaining devils have horrified face as they saw what happened to their comrade. The silver hair girl first blushed when Naruto called her cute girl. But became horrified when she saw they are tried to attack him, but then she saw the said devil disintegrated into ash. Even she couldn't register what just happened. But one of devil quickly recover and try to hit him, but before he even touch ice a purple flame hit him and burn him to ash. The remaining two tried to flew away, but froze in ice. Four figures appeared. Dot, the silver hair girl saw them coming, two of them has blonde hair, one of them has blue hair, and the last one has black hair. She just bowed to them and said thanks for saving my life. Why a devil wanted to kill another devil Naruto is about to ask, but it was Kunu who asked her. Clam down Kunu. Let me handle this said Naruto. Hey, what's your name I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Dot, the girl just asked you a question is Kunu, next to her another blonde is Kurumi. Next to her the blue hair girl is Tiamat, and next to her black hair girl is Office. The silver hair girl has her jaw on ground when she heard the name Tiamat and Office who would not after all Tiamat is a dragon king, while well, Office is a dragon god. I'm Valen. Valen Lucifer you can call me Vali said the silver hair girl, who now identified as Valen Lucifer. Lucifer said everyone except Office and they guard up. Naruto just looked at her her eyes became red because of sobbing. He didn't know what to do he wanted to help her. Easy everyone she isn't a threat. Said Naruto. Dot, now to be rude, but can you tell us why you are here? This territory isn't a devil territory. Bali didn't know what come over her, but her inner instinct is yelling at to trust the boy. She ended up telling them everything. In the end, Kunu, Kurumi have teary face while Tiamat was showing face of anger. Office just maintain her clam face. Naruto walked close to Silver Hair Girl and brought her in a comfortable warm hug. Tears were still running from her eyes, when she found herself in someone hug surprising, she didn't resist and hug him tighter and dig her face in his chest, while Naruto just patted her back gently. After 10 minutes, she claimed down and about to say, but her stomach growled. Her face become red of embracement. When you eat something last time? Asked Kurumi. The two days ago said Vali while looking down at ground. Naruto and the girls have terrified face at what they just heard. Come with us we are going for lunch. Said demanded Kunu immediately. Oh okay said Vali nervously, she didn't know how to react, since it's first time someone called her to eat with them. You can live with us I'm sure my parents and grandparent will not mind at all said Naruto. But partner, she has Albion, making her white dragon emperor said Drago loud, as Naruto left hand glow crimson. You shouldn't take any help from red dragon emperor, Vali said Albion as Vali back glow and white energy wings appear in her back. You both should know. No one wants to fight DDRAIG just look at her just look at her condition and Albi and I don't know about you, but do you truly care about your host? She didn't eat anything for two days you will be silent or I'll make you. And DDRAIG don't you dare to say fighter she has nothing to do with your and Albion rivalry Naruto shouted at both Drag and Albion. That eh, fine. You silent me boy. Who do you think you are? And Drag even agreed to you? Said Albion angrily as he said Naruto just touched Vali wings and let out some bit of his dragonic energy inside it, making him silent. Vali had just looked at him in awe. And said thanks Naruto-san. No need be so formal you can call me ice. Hey Vali come with us asked Kurumi as she dragged her with her and they walked towards the restaurant. Naruto and girls headed back to their home while Vali has very nervous face when she was told Naruto's grandparents are angels. Naruto assured her that she will not be in any danger. 
I'm feeling a devil presence nearby said Max. You're right. It is very dark a devil with this type demonic presence. Must be someone from old Mao faction, but I'm feeling Naruto and rest of girl's energy signatures with the devil, said Luna. Do you think a devil with them? I highly doubt, but if they have better to explain. Let's go and greet them and find out what's going on. Yes. Let's go. Naruto and the girls just arrived at house and saw Naruto-chan's grandparents was looking at them, and then they looked towards the devil they saw she has silver hair. Not only that she has scared gear, a dragon type, a Lajinus and since only two Lajinus class dragons scared gear created it wasn't take too long to realize them that the girl in front of them is white dragon emperor. Don't tell me you added her into your peerage Naruto-chan Max said, half expected that his grandson will say yes. No grandpa. I know she is cute. I'm not the person who take advantages declared Naruto. First volley has shocked face when she heard Naruto having peerage, but why she didn't feel any angelic or demonic energy from him. But when she heard Naruto-chan call her cute she blushed hard. And Luna wants to ask something, but Kurumi said something she stopped herself and listened. Grandpa. Grandma. You should hear her story. After the story. Luna just walked to volley and embrace her in tight hug. Naruto dear you did a good job invited her to live with us, said Luna, still hugging volley volley just melt in her motherly hug. And also stopping Drag and Albion fight praised Max. So she can live with us? Asked Naruto hopefully. Of course she can't said Luna while letting Vali go out of her embrace. Thank you. I'm under your care from now said Vali and bowed to them respectfully. I think she should join Naruto's peerage said Max, but cut off by Luna. What are you suggesting Max Luna asked as she glared him. Now Vali again heard about Naruto's peerage, but still can't feel any different energy, she only felt Dragonic energy in him. But if she was asked to join Naruto's peerage, she'll defiantly say yes he was too nice to her she was unknown person for him, a devil no less he treat her with food. Saved her from devil assassination also offered her to live with him. Don't get me wrong but think about it, her demonic energy can be felt by anyone nearby, also she is in Lucifer if someone tracked her Tao. Max was cut off in middle when Vali said some things that made everyone eyes widened. Yes. I'll join Naruto-kun's peerage, but I don't feel any angelic or demonic energy from Naruto-kun, so how has he a peerage in first place? Asked a very curious Vali Max just chuckled and let Naruto explain everything to her. Well, me and your grandma have a meeting so we are going out we'll come back at night till then why don't you all add Vali inside the house, add her in your little peerage, and introduce yourself properly. Suggested Max. Naruto and Rest nodded and walked inside the house while his grandparents left for a meeting. Naruto's room. Who knew already went to her home, while Tiamat and Office was in another room discussing about sudden development. Only Naruto Vali and Kurumi were present in Isa's room. You must be curious about my peerage asked Naruto looking at Vali. She nodded and said yeah. I can't sense any type of demonic or angelic energy inside you, Naruto-kun. It because of I am not an angel or devil. I'm a dragon and each person who joined my peerage has become a dragon and you never heard it about before because I'm the first person who have it. It also hides the person's original species, well the person can easily use his original power as well as dragonic power, and you also got dragonic energy since it turned you into a dragon. Like in your case you'll become a dragon while it hides your devil heritage, but you can use your devil power anytime. Explained Naruto. Vali was just watching him and odd odd a dragon period she never heard of. Of course, I can't he is the first person who have it, and if I join him, devils can't track me also it show me as a dragon to everyone, and he is a nice guy, if he isn't the girls with him will have a sad face instead of happy. Thought Vali. Is someone part of your peer Vali was cut off in middle of her question when Kurumi replied. Yes, I'm, I'm Naruto-kun's queen, said Kurumi while hugging Ice's right hand. Judging by look on her face I can say he is definitely a good person not to mention he saved me and took care of me. Without him, I may die thought Vali. I'll join said Vali when she has done her thinking. There is no turning away I ask you again do. You. Really. Want. To. Join. My. Peerage. Asked Naruto with a serious face and tone when he heard Vali's answer. Yes, I want to Vali said immediately, wasting no time, she already done her thinking about it. Very well then dot dot lay down on the bed I'll start the ritual, said Naruto, and Kurumi left the room as she was called by office through a mental link. She did as Naruto instructed dot. So what type of piece I should use? Thought Naruto. Use pawn pieces, ice. Since you already used your queen pieces, I think just only one pawn pieces will be enough to reincarnate her, since Great Red boosted the level of it, your each piece is beyond the level of a mutation piece. Thanks Drake Chan. You are a great help and nothing like that arrogant Albion. Thank you Ice that's mean a lot mentally said Drake. So Pawn Ha muttered Naruto as he brought his pawn pieces from one of his personal dimension pocket. 
Ah, suddenly bright crimson magic circle surrounded her, in the middle of the magic circle there is a huge dragonic face. That also woke Albion, and he is about to say something, but froze at what he heard next moment. Even Vali have same reaction. I, Naruto Uzumaki, one of the three dragon god, hereby ordering Val and Lucifer to join me as my pawn and serve me eternally chanted Naruto. As pawn piece went inside Vali, completely accepted her. And two pair of dragon wings burst out of her back. But the color of her wings are white instead of red. Ed dragon god. Vali asked hesitantly. Well, yeah, I'm not just a normal dragon, I'm a dragon god. So that's why you stop that demonic energy ball with just by one of your finger, asked Vali. Naruto just nodded. But you have boosted gear how? Asked Vali she still remembered when he show his boosted gear. Before he could answer and swear Albion spoke. You said you are a dragon god. Asked Albion as he not satisfied with just a nod. Yes I'm, Great Red confirmed it and also said to keep it a secret until I'm ready, so I'm requesting you to keep it a secret, said Naruto. Naruto hated to use his father name like that it wasn't like his father will say something, but he just didn't like to use his father name like that. Bali agreed immediately. Albion agreed too. But Albion couldn't help but still have shocked face. His host is in front of a dragon god, not just that also a part of the peerage won by said dragon god. Not just that the said dragon god also have boosted gear, and he met Great Red also he is living with infinite dragon god office what in world was going here. A week later. It's been a week since Vali joined Naruto's peerage and now training with Tiamat. Yes it is true she loved to train, but the where is of him treated her, she hated. She hate the person dearly who take her mother from her. Now she is a part of Yuzumaki household. And the way they treated her, she loves it. No one treated her like that except her own mother. Luna introduced her as her goddaughter, and Isa's parents treated her as own daughter. She was never treated like that before. It's first time she comes to know how is it like to have a real family. Kurumi-san, why you train so hard? Asked Vali, when she saw the determination Kurumi was showing during training. Kurumi just smiled and said, to protect everyone who dear to me. Vali looked at her at what she just heard. Then remember the whole family moment she had during a week period of time she understood what she meant, and that's brought a smile on her face. I see said Vali, looking at the sky. Today, Naruto was training with Yusaka. That's it for today Naruto-chan said Yusaka while giving him a water bottle. Isn't it too early asked Naruto curiously. Yes, it is, but I want you meet someone. Who can be great addition to your peerage said Yusaka, while giving him two paper. Naruto took the paper and before looking at them he spoke maybe, but I won't add anyone just because if they have potential to join my peerage, they must have a good heart. I added Kurumi back cause I knew her from my childhood and added Vali back cause I found her having a good heart, despite being a devil. I know Naruto-chan. That's why I thought you can take care of them. Both are girls one of them is orphan and in half Kitsune. She treated as a demon without her any fault because she is part of Kitsune, one of my personal guard member found her when a mob of people were chasing after her. While another girl is little bit dark and talk only when necessary, her entire family was killed in front of her. Said Yusaka with sad tone. Naruto have terrified face. How could someone treated someone like a demon, but he remembered Vali's family and what Vali told him about her family, but he paled when he heard someone entire family members killed in front of her. He have no idea what he'll do if he was in her place. Yusaka continued and spoke. I heard you and girls are going to a summer camp next week, so I want you to take them with you. So you can get them no better I'm sure you won't disappoint. Oh okay that'll work said Naruto. Suddenly he saw two figures entered the room. The newcomer were two girls. Both of them was same age as him. One of them have long flowing golden blonde hair was tied into twin pigtails by two black ribbons and she had purple eyes that shone with innocence and determination. While another one wears dark blue pants over which hangs a blue cloth that covers her from her stomach to her knees and which she secures with a purple rope belt. You called us, Yusaka-sama said the golden blonde hair girl with a bowing. Yes I want you to too to meet Naruto Uzumaki said Yusaka while pointing towards ice. And Naruto meet Naruki Uzumaki and Satoshi Ichiha. Introduced Yusaka while pointing towards both of girls. Chapter 5. Pawns and Sona Citri. Yes I want you to too to meet Naruto Uzumaki said Yusaka while pointing towards ice. And Naruto meet Naruki Uzumaki and Satoshi Ichiha. Introduced Yusaka while pointing towards both of girls. Hey there, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto simply introduced himself. I'm Naruki Uzumaki Tebeo, said Naruki cheerfully. Naruto was shocked at her behavior, he thought if she was treated as a demon then her self-confidence will be broken, but seeing her acting like a full of spirit has really surprised him. H.N., name Satoshi Achiha Satoshi simply stated, simply in Achiha traditions. 
Naruto can see the darkness building inside her, and he frowned, but knew since her family was slaughter in front of her, this type of behavior he can expect, but he wouldn't let her fall into the never-ending darkness. Well, girls I called you both here to talk about your future, Yusaka said with a serious face. Our future? Asked Naruki curiously. Satusuki just stared at her. Yes. You see, both of you moving into Naruto's house, Yusaka said to both girls. Yeah but why? Asked Satusuki and Naruki in unison, who scratched her head. Naruto just stared at H.E.R. Yusaka, what she was trying to do and about to ask, but Yusaka noticed his facial expressions and continue, ignoring girl's question, don't worry Naruto-chan, I already got your grandparents' permission, so you don't have to worry about it. And then looked towards both of girls while maintaining a serious face. You want to have a family? Don't you Naruki-chan? I'm 100% sure that they will treat you like one, I know Naruto family for a long time, so you don't have to worry about, said Yusaka with a smile. Dot. Really, they'll? Asked Naruki in a soft and low voice. However Naruto noticed her insecurities about being half Kitsune. And decided to interfere in their conversation. After all they are talking about his family, and he'll damned if anyone think about his family treat anyone like that, just watch Naruto childhood you'll understand. Yes, we'll treat you like a family member, and I'm sure Ka-chan and Tao-chan are going to treat you like their own daughter, just like Rumi-chan and Val-chan, just don't reveal your true form in their presence, declared Naruto. Naruki eyes widened exponentially as she looked up at Naruto, tears slowly welling in her eyes as she dropped the bag she was carrying in shock. Her hand slowly came up to cover her mouth as she couldn't believe what was happening to her right now. Her silent plea for having a family had finally come true, and she was overwhelmed with emotion. Naruto stepped forward and placed a hand on one of her shoulders, making her watery eyes look up as she saw compassion, understanding and love. And the silent message that he would never leave her alone, no matter how impossible it may seem. She thanked whoever that was above for letting her stumble upon on having a family, in the first place, and for that she was forever grateful. She embraced Naruto in tight hug. But before she can say anything Satusuki spoke. What will I get if I move into his house, Satusuki asked as she pointed to Naruto while looking at Yusaka. Don't you want a new family, asked Naruto. But I want is to kill a certain person, Satusuki stated. Naruto about to shout at her, but remember what she went through and spoke in very calm and serious voice, tell me Satusuki Ichiha this is what your family want, this is what your mother want you to become. Who just care about her revenge and killing instead of find happiness. I'm not telling you to completely abounding the idea of killing that person, but you cannot just forget about yourself being broody, won't bring your family back. Hearing that Satusuki eyes widened. Flashback begin. Achan said a teary girl. Satusuki don't be picky with what you eat, to eat lots and grow strong make sure that you take a bath every day and keep yourself warm also you couldn't stay up too late and you need lots of sleep make friends, ones that you could trust you also need to study and train hard everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. So you shouldn't get too depressed or frustrated if you couldn't get something right the first time. Okay sweetie. Satusuki just nodded and spoke. Don't leave me Koch and please Koch and Satusuki will be good girl Satusuki won't ask for any more toys and sweets just don't leave me. I'll never make troubles for you, please don't leave me alone, Satusuki pleaded in soft voice, tears prickling in the corner of her eyes. What could she say she too don't want to leave her daughter too, but what she almost at the stage to dying and breathing her last breath while having her last moment with her daughter. Promise me one thing Satusuki Chan. But Koch and. You will find happiness instead of fall into madness of revenge and. I will catch Anne. I will. Flashback ends. How she could forget this? How could she become what she promised her mother she want? Yet in front of a boy at same age as her made her remember that promise not to mention giving a chance to have a family. Dot. Next thing what she did was not just surprised him, but Yusaka and Naruki too. She smiled and bowed and said Arigato Naruto-sama. You just made me realize what I was forgetting and missing hope your family will before she continue Naruto cutter saying, it's our family from now Satusuki chan, and please don't use Sama from now we'll be family that bring another smile and blushed as she heard using chan with her name, on her face. Dot. Seeing this, Yusaka smiled and spoke. Aren't you a charmer Naruto teased Yusaka making Naruto and Satusuki blushed, while well, Yusaka just giggled. So what is your decision? Dot Satusuki chan. Said Yusaka. I will stated Satusuki, who still has pink blush in her face, making both Naruto and Naruki smile, who still was clinging to his right arm like a vice. Don't want let him go for fear he would run off or disappear if she let go. Naruto understood what's in her kind, and spoke, don't worry I'm not going to disappear. I promise. That lesser Naruki's worries and she let him go from her embrace. Yusaka just smile and giggle at their interaction. Both of girls left for pack their stuff, leaving Yusaka and Naruto alone. They know about joining my peerage? asked Naruto curiously. 
Yes, I told them yesterday, but I also told them only if, not only you, but both of them agree to, said Yudaka with a serious tone. That's why. They are moving in exclaimed Naruto. Yes you'll get chance spend more time with them. So. You both are lucky you know getting chance with living with my Naruto-kun said Kunu, looking at both girls who were busy in packing their stuff. You are telling us like he is some sort of hero. Kunu-sama said Satusuke curiously as Kunu never compliments someone let alone a boy dot. Yes. He is dot dot said Kunu immediately, while remembering how he saved her. Really Kunu-sama? Asked Naruki when she heard Kunu. How so? Asked Satusuke who didn't know why she wanted to know she just wanted to know. Yes remember I told you I was attacked by some devils. Both of them nodded well, he was the one who saved me from those disgusting creatures, both Naruto and Satusuke eyes widened at what just they heard the boy they just met, was the one who saved Kunu, as she mentioned the devils that attacked her were strong. After that incident Kunu started to show deep hatred towards devil it didn't help as she heard about Vali incident, but that didn't mean she hates Vali. No she won't hate that girl that become one of her best friend, but she hated Vali's family for treating her like that. Birai only get chance to sleep over at his house five to six times in a month, while Fist Chan Rumi Chan Tia Chan can sleep with him every night. Heck Val Chan is now sleeping in his bed, I'm the only one who left out Mother Kunu. Enough to hurt by both girls. Sleep with him? Started Naruki. In same bed? Finished Satusuke. Both of girls were now blushing red. You know he is so warm said Kunu, still in her thought. That's it. Naruki couldn't take it and fainted. Satusuke immediately rushed to her and coughed her before she fell dot. Naruki wake up. Wake up. Damn it. Look Kunu-sama what you did Satusuke shouted, still have blush on her face. When Kunu came out from her dream, found Naruki on bed while Satusuke was shaking her and yelling at her. What happened? Satusuke-chan. Kunu asked innocently. Satusuke just looked at her for a minute, then replied nothing Kunu-sama, we aren't supposed to hear about your boyfriend body being warm when you slept with him. Kunu realized what she told them and blushed heavily. At Yuzumaki resident garden. So you are Naruki and Satusuke, Yasaka-san told us about Ask Max while looking at both girls. Hi, Sofusama said Naruki with a bow. Luna just giggled and said, you don't have to so formal sweetie. While patting Naruki head. Satusuke was just staring at them. Seeing Satusuke, Max spoke, and you. I'm Satusuke Achiha please take care of me from now said Satusuke with a bow. Luna shocked at her voice since she already knew about her past and didn't expect her to behave normal, kind and polite. Naruto smiled which didn't go unnoticed by Max as he spoke, you're doing. While looking at him and that cough Luna attention too. Naruto just nodded and said, I just help her to remind of herself noting else. She was the one who before he can continue. Suddenly a giant ball of fire come towards Naruto, Naruki saw this and crash tackled Naruto down, but she wasn't the only one who pulled him, resulting trio fell on the ground, Naruki on the top of him. Well the giant fireball hit the near couch and totally burned it. But surprisingly Naruki wasn't the only one who pulled Naruto, Satusuke too. Both of them each side of him too close, making the situation awkward. Naruto noticed her eyes glowing red. Satusuke didn't know what was it. But she can feel some sort of attraction towards the boy. She didn't know why she acted this way. But she could let something happen to her family. Luna immediately used her scared gear and froze the remaining couch. Dot. Naruto-chan, Naruki-chan, Satusuke-chan, you guys are alright? Asked Luna in worried tone. Suddenly three figures arrived there, that happened to be Office, Tiamat, and Kurumi. Vali wasn't at house at the moment, she was currently training with Amaterasu very hard she wants to reach her balance breaker, not just for her, for her family too. Kurumi words motivated her on another level. She too want to protect her family, especially Naruto. The one who is sole reason why she is feeling this way. Naruto just didn't save her, he gave her a family too. And joining his peerage is the best thing she ever did in her life. Kurumi saw Naruto was on ground, laying. And spoke what happened. And sorry about the couch dot dot the barrier just broke and why was Naruto on the ground? Well, dear your fireball just about to hit Naruto-chan, but thanks to Naruki-chan and Satusuke-chan he was saved, said Luna in anger tone. Kurumi froze. Her attacked about to hit her precious Naruto-kun. Oh my god, what Naruto-kun will think about her. What if he hate her for that? What if the fireball really hit him? That thought running on Kurumi's mind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Naruto-kun I'm really sorry I didn't mean it. You know, I can't hurt you even in my dream Naruto-kun. Please don't hate me, I rather hurt mice before she could finish she was pulled in tight hug of Naruto. SSSSSSSHHHHH Rumi-chan I know you didn't do that on purpose. And I'm not gonna hate my cute queen. Thank you Naruto-kun said Kurumi, hugging tighter, while blushing at his remark of my cute queen. 
Who are those both girls? Asked Office, she wanted to know who tried to save her mate. She knew that type of attack is nothing for her mate, but someone tried to save him without thinking twice. I'll let me introduce Naruki-chan and Satusuki-chan, meet Office-chan, Tiamat-chan or Tia-chan and Kurumi-chan or Rumi-chan, while pointing to Office, Tiamat and Kurumi respectively, when he mentioned their names. And everyone meet Naruki Uzumaki and Satusuki Acha, both going to join our family. Said Naruto while pointing towards them. Kurumi just bowed to them and said, thanks for saving my Naruto-kun from my fire. It's nothing Kurumi-san and we are family, and saving a family member is a job of another family member, so you don't have to bow to me said Naruki. Max and Luna both smiled when they heard Naruki. HN, said Satusuki. Um, at Sundier. Huh? Both Max and Luna thought when they heard Satusuki. Max just chuckled and Luna giggled. Currently, Luna was introducing both Naruki Naruki and Satusuki to Ice's parents at dinner table. I didn't know you are a kendo champion mom, said Kin, when he was told his own mother once a kendo champion. Dot. You bet, I'm Luna said childishly. It is awkward for them to seeing, behave her that, but when she overexcited she behave like a child. And who is adorable golden blonde hair girl and cutie raven girl asked Hitomi while looking at Naruki, who has nervous face how her new family gonna react to her. Luna saw this, and she has a perfect story, also the story will make them close to Hitomi too. The adorable golden blonde's name is Naruki Uzumaki and cutie raven named Satusuki Acha. Both of them were orphaned before I adopted both of them today. Said Luna. Aren't our family getting bigger and bigger after we moved in here? Joked Kai. Yeah but isn't what we always want. A big family replied Max. Kin grinned hearing and spoke. Yeah dad, but I think Naruto is already making an harem for himself, and in Fu before Kin could finish his sentence, he earned smack his head by Hitomi of course. Naruki and Satusuki just stared at him at what he was talking about his son. While well, Naruto choked the food he was eating. Luna decided to drop a tiny bomb that will surely help both of the girls to bond with Naruto's parents anyway, another reason is both of them saved Naruto's life today so, before she could complete her sentence, a yell can hurt an entire mansion. W what? yelled Hitomi and Kai in unison. Naruto suddenly found himself in tight gasp with his mother, who checking on him while saying, Naruto baby what happened? Did you get hurt? Somewhere? Tell your Kachan everything now. Shouted Hitomi, almost having a hard time when she found out her little baby life was in danger. I'm fine Kachan stated Naruto calmly and help her mother to clam down. Luna simple simply stated he wasn't careful while crossing road that almost confirmed he was going to get punished without doing anything much to Naruto's displeasure. And then he shot to her, Luna, with a look of disbelief. She just sold him out. Thank you. Thank you. For saving my Sachi said Hitomi as she hugged Naruki. Before Naruki say something, Satusuki spoke. Actually I helped too, you know said Satusuki as she didn't want to left out. Thank you. Satusuki-chan. said Hitomi as she thanked her too. For saving his son. But she got a hug, muttered Satusuki to herself, Hitomi heard it and smiled and walked to her and brought her in a comfortable motherly hug. It's been a while when Satusuki got a monthly hug her mother used to give her. And she melted in Hitomi hug, like a daughter. Luna just smiled seeing Satusuki was getting along too. Before anyone could say anything, Kai spoke. I must thank both of you for saving my son. Let me know if you both need anything said Kin with a smile. Actually one thing Kin can I promise Naruki-chan and Satusuki-chan that you and Hitomi-chan can give them said Luna, while hoping they'll say yes when she asked them. What is it mother? Tell us said Hitomi. Kai Kin nodded. Well, both of them are orphans one never have parents, let alone family and other lost everything. That's why I adopt them, but I can't give them a patently love. Can I? So I want you both to treat them as your own daughter. Said Luna, shocking Kai and Hitomi. Kai Kin and Luna looked at each other and then smiled. And looked at Naruki, who was watching them with a nervous face. We love to have Naruto and Satusuki as our daughter said Hitomi, looking at Naruki. Naruki sniffed as she looked up at Hitomi, eyes watery and puffy. Kei-ka-san. While well, Satusuki just stared at them but remembered the hug she got from Hitomi and smiled. Ha-san. Muttered Satusuki. Hitomi just smiled even wider when she heard their words. Yes Naruki-chan and Satusuki-chan. I am your Ka-san. From now on and forever. She said, Kin smiled and spoke. Your name will be Naruki Uzumaki from now okay? Naruki-chan. And Satusuki you Satusuki Uzumaki from now as well, asked Kai in fatherly tone. Naruki just cried even harder. Satusuki just nodded. Hi, Otu-san said Naruki. Now now don't get carried away. We must talk about Naruto's punishment said Kai. Hitomi just nodded. While well, Luna and Max just sweat dropped. Naruto paled. While well, Tiamat giggled. Vali, Naruki and Satusuki have confused faces. But Kurumi looked towards Naruto. As she saw his face she lowered her head in shame. 
Naruto, simply to say you are grounded for a week, said Kai with a serious face. Hitomi nodded. And no TV. No internet no games. Added Hitomi. Naruto just stared at her with looked of disbelief, but seeing how serious she was he nodded reluctantly. This is the first time Naruto was punished for anything, but ironically he did nothing. And you aren't going any summer camp either. Said Kai, he don't want to do this, but after hearing Naruto almost risking his life wasn't pleased him. He was totally forgetting that he adopted Naruto, he was totally his son by all but bloods. And the thought of losing him well that was enough reason to he can't let just slide the matter. Max looked at his wife how childish her idea was and caused cancelling the South Carolina summer camp for their grandson. And he have a thought now if Naruto isn't going then no one. It doesn't matter how much do they much want to go there. Since office isn't going leave Naruto, office prefer spending more time with Naruto above all. Tiamat same reason as office. Bali won't going to leave them, and as for Kurumi she'll do anything for Naruto. Going on South Carolina will be the last thing she'll do. Let's not do this they are quite excited about it said Max. Luna nodded. Hey, it's only for Naruto actually rest can go said Kai, even he isn't like the idea. But wondering why his father said they he knew that all children are pretty close to each other, but they aren't going to cancel the whole. Can they? Only if he knows. Luna cursed herself knowing how much deeply Hitomi and Kai care and love Naruto, and they won't let it slide without punishing him, so he won't do something like that again, but more importantly Naruto couldn't go summer camp this year. The very same thing that made Naruto excited when she told him about summer camp, and because of her ridiculous idea of getting Naruki and Satusuke get along with Hitomi and Kai, easily caused a family issue, and if doesn't solve easily, it is going to make big situation. Even she knew if Naruto isn't going then just forget about rest will go. She did know well that Hitomi will shout at Naruto, but never thought of punishment, let alone prohibited him to go summer camp. She decided to interfere. I agree with all punishment, but stopping him to go South Carolina inside she doesn't like what was she just said about agreeing about punishment, and if only she knew this idea will backfire, she just find another way, but now everything ruined. We know Ka-san, but what Naruto did was completely reckless, and we aren't going to change our decisions said Hitomi. That was the final hit Kurumi just couldn't take it and suddenly stand up and spoke. It's my fault so punish me instead of him he did nothing it was all my fault and stupidity, stated Kurumi still lowering her head. Kai and Hitomi just looked at her and saw how much her face full of sadness, regrets and shame. Vali has no clue what was going on, so she decided that she'll ask them later. Hitomi and Kai just looked towards her and Hitomi decided to ask she meant. What do you mean Rumi-chan? I was responsible for that incident, which didn't happen at all, stated Kurumi. Naruto didn't like what was she saying. Yes it was her fireball, but that didn't mean he will let her going to face the punishment alone and spoke. She is just saying so I can go South Carolina. Kachan she has nothing to do with this Naruto said immediately, much to everyone's shock except Kai and Hitomi. That statement made proud Max that his grandson willingly to protect what is precious to him without giving a single thought, but frowned at Luna's idea. Tiamat and Vali giggled mentally at overprotective nature of Naruto about them. They knew Naruto doesn't show favoritism to them, and if he stands for Kurumi, he'll stand for them too. Naruki and Satusuke now have some idea that what incident they are talking about and how they make it to appeared like. But both of them have shocked face when they heard Naruto standing for Kurumi. Now I can understand why you fall for him Kunusama thought both Naruki and Satusuke. The office just looking at him with a smile on her face, she knew her mate was caring. Luna is now at the point, didn't know what'll she do next, so things go how it's supposed to be. Kurumi just stared at him and then smiled when she understand, he was just protecting her from same punishment, that's how her precious Naruto-kun is. But she isn't going to let him take all punishment, and spoke. No. Obasan it's all my fault. Find you both share same punishment for weeks, along with the prohibition of going South Carolina rest can go South Carolina next week, and you both can do whatever, but we aren't taking you anywhere said Hitomi while looking towards both of them, her heart inside just broke seeing her son and her niece face. She didn't want to separate children, but what she could do so Naruto don't do something stupid next time. Better be safe than sorry. She didn't want to do prohibit them to go to South Carolina, after all she was the one who suggested it in first place, but she can't let them slide it without punishment. Naruto just left the dining room without finishing his plate. Max and Luna didn't like the things just happened. This is the first time Naruto left the dining table, but when they except Kai Hitomi, Naruki, and Satusuke, noticed the plate they found he didn't eat a single thing. Their mood suddenly become regretful after all today's food was all Naruto's favorite. And he left without eating. I should stop Luna when she suggested that idea thought Max with a sad face. I just ruined everything he did nothing and got punished. 
Luna cursed herself and looked where he was sit before then his plate and frowned, and my poor baby didn't eat anything, and it was all his favorite. We aren't liking the idea, but thought Hitomi and Kai. My Naruto isn't going South Carolina or some type of restrictions on him. Who cares he will do whatever he want, and I'll make sure of it no one I mean, no one will stop him doing anything he want even the entire world against him, I'll stand by his side, no matter what the condition is. Thought office while Tiamat having the same thought. Do much thinking similarity about their mate, between a dragon king and a dragon god. What the hell just happened and if my Naruto Koi isn't going, then I'm not going to dot thought volley. No. No. This isn't going to this way. My Naruto-kun just punished for my stupidity, and he tried to save me punishment even when I interfered I'll make it up for him, but how? Thought Kurumi and then looked at Luna with most hateful looked how dare she. I didn't mind if she blamed me for everything, but she have to include my Naruto-kun, and then looked at his plate and curiosed herself more he didn't eat anything. Then she looked at her plate and noticed she didn't too, her plate was untouched, and she didn't try to touch it, and simply left the room too, following ice. Unknown to Kurumi, Luna and Max both coughed how Kurumi was looking towards Luna. Max didn't like it a single bit whatever happening at the table. He can see the hateful glare of Kurumi and knows how much Naruto mean to her, Kurumi, and that look will completely break Luna's heart if it didn't yet. Luna is at her worst now. Her stupid idea completely backfired, not just Naruto and Kurumi punished, but when she noticed Kurumi hateful glare she completely froze, like yelling at her you could blame me for it, but how dare you to include Naruto-kun, he has nothing to do with this. But when she saw her leaving without even touching her food, she just lose her appetite. She can't even think that Naruto and Kurumi went to bed without eating, Naruto and Kurumi went to bed without eating, and now this is happening. Breaking the awkward silent, Hitomi asked it's only 8, so how about going out for shopping Tomro? Naruki-chan and Satusuki-chan. Ah oh, no, it's my first time going shopping with anyone, said Naruki. It's fine Naruki-chan how about you Satusuki-chan? I'd like to if it isn't any problem for you said Satusuki. Of course. It isn't any problem I think Office-chan, Tia-chan and Val-chan tag along too, said Hitomi Kai didn't like the idea of leaving Naruto and Kurumi, but what he could say. Naruto just entered his room. He switched off all the lights in his room and go to bed. What I did to deserve this? Mentally cursed Naruto. Nothing. You did nothing. It's your botch and way to make the matter worse. Greg. Of course. I'm and I'm not alone. Not alone and where were you that time? Contacting your father you know. You told Tu Chan about it. Yes he did and you know you have nothing to worry about you inherit primordial power of creation and destruction, so you can do anything by just thinking. Tu Chan is that you? And I know Tu Chan, but isn't it cheating? Yes. You're Tu Chan, and let me tell you one thing son listen carefully. What is it Tu Chan? You can do whatever you want. Consequences be damned. Really? Aren't you spoiling him? Spoiling? He is my son. And let me tell you one thing he can do whatever you want. Anyway my little dragon god, you know how to make blood clones. Greg just shrugged. Naruto chuckle at his father behavior. What is a blood clone to Chan? As stated by the name, the user makes a blood clone of themselves. These clones have a fraction of the user's overall power, but are useful for attacks and other diversions. As expected, they are capable of bleeding and are quite durable. Do you understand? So I can go anywhere while leaving a clone? Yes, you can. That'll be awesome. Now take a nap so we could drag you in your mindscape so we can train you. Hi. Kurumi was standing outside the Naruto's room in front of door. She didn't know how Naruto will react. She opened his door and found there is only darkness. All lights were switched off. She used her little flame to see around. She found Naruto on bed lying asleep. She soon joined him, laying close to him, before covering them with a warm blanket. While gently breathing, Kurumi's arms wrapped around Naruto's shoulders, effectively bringing his face into her censored, squashing his face. Smiling dumbly, Naruto just went with the soft heartbeat of Kurumi, gently lulling him to sleep. Soon office, Tiamat and Vali joined them. It became daily routine for them. It wasn't like they didn't have their own, but still they loved to sleep at his room. In Dreamworld. Finally did it. Yes, you mastered the technique, Naruto. Nah, Naruto-chan do you want to accelerate your training? Accelerate you say? But how? I just can't train 24-7 I have other things to do. I know, but what will happen when someone do it for you? Someone do it for me? Why would someone do that for me, and if someone else do training it will help him or her not me said a very confused Naruto. It's called multiple shadow clone. Shadow clone require less chakra than a blood clone. That's forbidden, you know. Forbidden? Is it dangerous or something? Why it is forbidden anyway? Not for those who have high chakra reverse and magic. So low chakra reverse person can't do it. Huh. But aren't I a dragon god? 
Hi, my cute little dragon god. Bad I'm not a child. Yes you are, my little dragon god. Greg chuckled at the scene of how Naruto and Great Red interacting, it's truly amusing for them seeing dragon gods acting like this dot, but he decided to interfere, knowing if he want, they will continue for the day. How could I forget, he is your son. Well Naruto, it's called multiple shadow clone, this technique creates copies of the user, however, these clones are corporeal instead of illusions. The user's chakra is evenly distributed among every clone, giving each clone an equal fraction of the user's overall power. The clones are capable of performing techniques, including the shadow clone technique itself, on their own and can even bleed, but will usually disperse after hit by a strong enough force. The clones can also disperse on their own or be dispelled by the user of the technique. But when disperse, it transferred its memory as well as experience to original, so if you. If I create more the more they will learn and when it dispersed. It automatically transformed all things they will learn to me. Indeed so ready to boost your training. Hi. Morning, at breakfast table. All are having breakfast together as their morning routine, but today's everyone mood is little bit tensed. Because the breakfast table clearly missing Naruto, Kurumi, Office, Tiamat and Vali. Their thoughts were different at the moment. They all miss not a coincidence. Now thing will get worse. Thought Max with a sad face. They didn't have dinner yesterday, and now breakfast thought Luna with a face of full regret. Where are they? They didn't miss breakfast. Thought Kai and Hitomi. Looks like Naruto overslept said Max with a sign breaking the tensing moment. Luna couldn't take it and spoke while looking towards a household servant. James, go check on Naruto and rest. If they already awake then bring them here. James nodded and left. But they missed breakfast and they didn't eat dinner yesterday, stated Luna. Kai and Hitomi eyes blinked before widened when they heard last comment. What do you mean by not having dinner? asked Hitomi, silently praying that she misheard. There will be no way Naruto-chan missed his dinner when it was his favorite, how wrong she was. Kai nodded too. He also wanted to know. You didn't notice. Did you? None of them had dinner yesterday including Naruto of course. Their plates were untouched. Explained Max. Hitomi and Kai were thought first that they misheard, but when Max confirmed it at what they heard it, is indeed true. Their face became ghostly pale. Were we little hard on him? Asked Hitomi, hoping that wasn't the only reason. Dot. To put it simply there was no one fault there. I was there and I said no one. Max replied in stern face. Hitomi and Kai blinked before looking at each other. Kai spoke. So we punished him for the first time in his life, and he has nothing to do with this. Hitomi recalled the sad face of Naruto yesterday. She understood the impact she had on him. Before she could say anything James entered the room. James, where are they? Asked Kai immediately as he saw James entering the room. In Sama, they are still asleep. Said James. Kai Kin nodded while Max just signed. Hitomi still can't believe that she punished her little baby boy without any reason and frowned. Her frown deeper when she recalled the yesterday event. So we have to talk to him and tell him he is ungrounded, as well as can go South Carolina stated Kin Kai with a happy face. How about you take all of them for shopping? Suggested Max. I'm going to then said Luna immediately, not wasting any chance to make up to her little grandson. A pair of golden eyes opened in response to the sunlight filtering into the large room. Said boy groaned as he slowly returned to the waking world. He felt two warm breaths tickle his chest and smiled at the now common sight of the mop of blonde hair and black hair that belonged to Kurumi and office. He looked at the clock and find it's already half past eight. The oversleep whenever something annoyed him. Breakfast at eight looks like I missed my breakfast too. Thought Naruto when his stomach growled and it didn't help as he didn't eat anything last night. He stroked their hair gently as he recalled what had happened yesterday and frowned. He checked his surrounding and found Tiamat and Vali were gone. Vali liked to do morning training. As for Tiamat, he heard his bathroom shower is on, and he has plenty of idea where she is, and he confirmed it by his dragonic sense. Naruto was cut off from his thoughts when he heard Kurumi and Office mutter, indicating that they were finally starting to wake up. He couldn't help but chuckle as it was widely known at household that the Kurumi wasn't much of a morning person, and as for Office, she didn't care about morning. Kurumi opened her eyes to the morning, looking around the room sleepily before giving a warm smile to him. Office give a warm smile to her husband mate, snuggling deeper into his chest. How are you feeling Naruto-kun? Kurumi asked. Tired. And kind of hungry Naruto stated. We missed breakfast too, not to mention we didn't have dinner yesterday. Office said calmly who's still snuggling in his chest. We I think only I missed said Naruto, not liking the idea of they didn't eat too. It's my foul before Kurumi complete her sentence, Naruto brought her in a tight embrace and spoke. It has nothing to do with you, my queen don't forget it dot dot, given we are grounded and restricted to go South Carolina, but when can fun at home and ride off his heim. 
My husband speaks truth Rumi Chan. I was there too and didn't find you guilty anyhow. So just forget it and how about bath together then breakfast? Replied office. Suddenly the bathroom door opened and revealed Tiamat, who wore nothing but just towel. Naruto blushed deeply seeing that. While well, office and Kurumi narrow their eyes. Seeing Naruto face, Tiamat smirked. Like would you see Naruto kun dot 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 said Tiamat in very seductive tone, making a seductive pose too. Naruto blushed heavily, but before Tiamat tease him more Kurumi spoke. Cut it Tia Chan, this isn't the time. Yes, Rumi Chan, is right. Office stated who now sitting in Ice's lap. I already have a plan. But first go take a bath you all. Said Tiamat. Suddenly someone opened the door and entered the room. Naruto looked at the person who entered his room and spoke with a smile. Good morning Val Chan. Bali smiled and leaned towards him and a give a pick on his cheek and said, Morning Naruto-kun, Rumi Chan Fist Chan you guys finally awake huh? Yeah dot dot we're going to take a bath together. Wanna join? Asked Kurumi. Of course. I'll join an office Chan did you cancel the registration of South Carolina? Said asked Bali. Cancel the registration? Yes. I already cancelled it last night simply office stated. Naruto looked at her with a look of disbelief and spoke, Why did you do that don't you want to go there? Dot in response office just looked at him and said, I only want to go there because you were going. She is telling the truth ice we all were agree to go there because you were going. Said Tiamat. You mean you all are Naruto stared. Not going finished Bali. And that's right we already cancelled our registration. Naruto is about to suggest them to go there if Kurumi didn't speak. Kurumi already knew what's going on her Naruto koi mind dot. She simple cup both Isa cheeks with her hands and said, We were going just you wanted to go there, Naruto kun dot before they will continue Tiamat cut them in middle. Anyway I have talked to Kunu and she is coming here within an hour. Then we can discuss about it said Tiamat. Ah. Kunu chan, it's good to see you again said Hitomi when she saw Kunu at the door. Good morning, Hitomi sama, it's good to see you too, replied Kunu politely. Kunu chan. You at early morning. Asked Luna suspiciously. Kunu may sleep over there many times, but she never visited Naruto chan at early morning. Tia chan informed me about changing some plan and asked to come early so we could have breakfast together as well as discuss. Said Kunu. Changing plans. What about it? Asked Max. He didn't like the way when he heard the changing plans, and if his guess was right, then it will be about South Carolina. Oh. We cancelled our registration of South Carolina, and Tia Chan asked me come early, so we could discuss more Kunu stated simply, much to Hitomi and Luna's horror. After all entire South Carolina idea suggested by Hitomi and Luna is the one who told the children. You didn't cancel the registration. Did you Kunu Chan? After all, everyone is going asked Kai. He was hoping he misheard of something that going to cancel. He didn't think that they already did that. I already did. So Tia Chan office Chan, Vali Chan did. Last night Tia Chan called me and said Naruto Kun and Rumi Chan cancelled their registration, she didn't tell me the details why they did so, but if they aren't going then I'm too. Said Kunu while rubbing her head. She has no idea what her statement will do to them. As she said she head towards Isa's room, leaving Isa's parents and grandparents with regretful faces. What we have done. They already cancelled the registration. Said Hitomi while looking at Kin. A and Kin equals Kai, Hitomi gave Kin a nickname that is Kai so, don't confuse between them both are same person that is Naruto's father. We punished him for no reason and ended up cancelling entire South Carolina, replied Kin. This is all my fault if only I said Luna, who lower her head in shame. Max just left the hall, he didn't like the way things are going. When he and Luna make Kin and Hitomi understand that there isn't any Naruto's fault there they were too late. I think you should take Naruki and Satuski for shopping as you promised them yesterday. I don't think anyone from rest will join you as they making plans, said Kin to Hitomi who just lowered her head and spoke. Yes, you are right we made a worse decision yesterday resulting cancelling South Carolina, but if they are going to make plans for summer, we must support them. Somehow make it up for Naruto this is first time time we grounded him and where he wasn't guilty, if only we think with cool mind and at least give him a chance to explain. Dot. As Kunu joined Naruto and rest of girls. Vali told her everything what happened yesterday. No surprising, Kunu face become red of anger. You mean to tell me Naruto Kun grounded and forced to cancel his South Carolina because of things he even didn't do it? To put it simply, yes replied Tiamat. I'm sorry. I'm the main Rie so Kurumi started to apologize, but stop when Kunu stopped her and spoke. You have nothing to do with this it's all road crossing incident they mentioned which didn't happen at all. Dot. Kurumi get the inner meaning of her word that simply stated it's because of someone used Naruto-chan use as scapegoat. So what plan did you make Tia-chan? Asked Naruto. Oh Naruto-kun. Always eager ha. Huh? Teased Tiamat, making Naruto blushed a little, then glare at her and rest of girls glaring as well. 
Okay. Okay. Let's finish the breakfast first then we can talk about it and Naruto Koi, only you are allowed to look me like that added Tiamat, causing Naruto's face go redder than great red. While well, all the girls glaring dagger at her. So decided to drop it before it'll go out of control. Isn't dining room inside? Why we are going towards garden? Asked a confused Kunu. Because we are going to have breakfast in open garden stated Naruto. Soon they entered garden a table which surrounded by six chair. The table was full of food. And two servants standing near the table, mainly waiting for them to arrive. Here you breakfast Naruto-sama, as you request said one of them. Thank you, Sai-san. You too Bonnie-san Naruto simply stated. Both of them give a half polite now and left, leaving six of them. After breakfast. So what now? Asked Vali this time Naruto decided to remain shit not wanting to get teased more by Tiamat. Oh I was hoping Naruto-kun going to ask me. I'm wounded. Naruto-kun, don't you care about your lit before Tiamat could finish she hit by everyone killer intent towards her even office except Naruto. Office's killer intent is enough for make her shut up. Now you things get serious you would like to tell us about your plan. Asked Naruto. Hein did you guys hear about Okinawa? And Naruto if I'm correct your family own a resort there? Asked Tiamat. Yes. We are Naruto paused and his eyes widened in realization of her idea. Great idea Tia-chan you're the best exclaimed Naruto. Tiamat just giggled. Okinawa. Ha I have to tell Kasama. Also have to take her permission stated Kunu. Don't worry Kunu-chan Yasaka-sama will let you go cheered Kurumi happily. Dot. Yes. We got almost a week for prepare. Next week we'll be at Okinawa said Vali. Which everyone nodded. Currently Max is at his study room. Thinking about the last night event and Kunu's words. He could help but thinking the possibility of Naruto, requesting going back to Kuo. He shivered just thinking the possibility. He cut from his thoughts when there is a knock at door. Knock knock. Come in. Naruto entered his grandfather's study room. And simply looked at him. Max smiled when he saw Naruto was the one who came. Sit Naruto-chan do you want to talk about something? Asked Max. Yes grandpa we're decided. Can we go to Okinawa next week? Asked Naruto. Okinawa. Quite a lovely place for summer we already have resort there. And next week you say okay fine. Have fun there Max immediately agreed and given permission, not wanting to cause any more disturbance inside the family. I'll inform Luna, Kin and Hitomi. Don't worry about that added Max. Thanks Grandpa Naruto thanked him and left. Okinawa. Ha let's go there then I already know Luna and Hitomi will immediately agree to go there with them and as for Kin Hitomi alone enough to make him come thought Max. One hour later. Max was seated on couch at hall. While drinking tea. When he heard Luna, Hitomi, Naruki and Satusuki sounds of chatting. He looked at door and find four figure entering the room. How was your shopping Naruki-chan Satusuki-chan? Asked Max. It was great we had ice cream there, said a very excited Naruki. We bought stuff for South Carolina too said Satusuki. Hearing her mentioning South Carolina, Max frowned while Luna and Hitomi just lowered their head. Naruki noticed the reaction and asked what happened. Dot. Luna decided to answer her question, well you see Naruki, Naruto isn't going there. Hearing it Naruki and Satusuki face lose happiness too. Yeah, I know Ani same isn't going. You punished him and prohibited him to go there. Dot. That's not all. When we comes to know the truth behind the incident and finding Naruto was innocent. We about to tell him that he can go like rest, but it was too late you see. Bali, Tiamat, Office, even Kunu all cancelled their registration yesterday as Naruto did. Stated Hitomi with low voice, she wasn't happy when she prohibited him to go South Carolina, and finding him innocent completely break her she she even started to doubt is she a good mother. Well. I have a good dot dot there is development there. Stated Max with a smile. Development. What is it? Asked Luna curiously. One hour ago, Naruto came to my study room and before he could finish he was bombarded by Luna and Hitomi questions. What is it? He wants to go somewhere he wants to South Carolina or do something. He is okay not nah, tell us Luna and Hitomi ask in unison much to Max surprised. He never saw Luna acting this way and who kidding, this matter include a grandson. And a baby son for Hitomi. Well, they wants to go Okinawa. Said Max. Okinawa didn't we own a high class resort there? We are going to then said Hitomi, without thinking twice. Okinawa. A fitting place to spend summer, as expected from my grandson, said Luna before giggling. Well, he is still thinking he is grounded. And I didn't clear misunderstanding because I wanted you, Hitomi-chan to clear it tonight at dinner table. It started on dinner table and will end on it. Declared Max. At the dinner table. Max, Luna, Hitomi and Kinkai already present at the dinner table, along with Naruki and Satusuki. Naruki and Satusuki both agreed on going to Okinawa instead of South Carolina if rest are going. Flashback begin. 
Naruki sitting in her bed thinking about whether she'll go South Carolina or Okinawa as Naruto suggested wanted to go. If she continue and go to South Carolina next week, then Satsuki is the only person she knows, will tag along even Kunusama isn't going. She was cut from her thought when someone knocked at her door. How minutes open said Naruki. Ah. Satsuki chan said Naruki when saw Satsuki coming. Naruki we need to talk stated Satsuki with a serious face. Which Naruki understood. Is it about South Carolina? And changing plan, wanted to going Okinawa. Ask Naruki with a smile she is thinking the same from past hour. How did yo so you are thinking the same asks Satsuki. To tell you honestly I like the way Ani sama stand for Kurumi-chan. Don't you agree? Ask Naruki. Well, you are right in seeing the look on rest of them, I can easily say he'll stand for them too, stated Satsuki. Isn't he the king? Yeah and Kurumi is his queen. He even took her blame on himself without thinking twice. He is different king instead of building an peerage, he is building a family. I guess you are right this is one of the reason I agree to join his peerage. You already want to join. Yeah I want to join Nani Isama's peerage. Don't tell me you don't want to. He treated us like his family. He gave me the family I ever wanted I felt it when we went to shopping today. I guess you're right let's talk to him after dinner. Flashback ends. Naruto and rest of girls entered the dining room and find everyone staring at them. Naruto-chan come here. Come to Ka-chan said ordered Hitomi. Which Naruto follow, as Naruto went near her. She pulled him to her and forced him to sit on her lap, much to Naruto's embracement. Ka-chan shouted Naruto in embracement, his face became little red. What Naruto-chan? Do you want something? What are you doing by suddenly pull me on your lap? Oh, it's simple I'm going to feed you Naruto-chan. And she looked at Kinkai who nodded, we are sorry for yesterday Naruto-chan Hitomi and Kin said in unison. Sorry for? Asked a very confused Naruto. We punished you for no reason even we prohibited you to go South Carolina, as Hitomi said and lowered her head and said, we wanted to say sorry. It's okay Kachan. Replied Naruto with a smile. No, it's not okay. Kachan is going to make it up for you now, so Kachan decided to take you Okinawa. Not only you but everyone going declared Hitomi, much to Naruto's shock. Dot, dot, since he thought only he girls are going. Really? Yeah and you and Kurumi, both are ungrounded said Hitomi while patting Ice's head. Thank you Obasan replied Kurumi as she heard Hitomi. Orumi-chan Obasan is sorry okay. Sweetie. Apologized Hitomi. It's okay. Obasan. Now now Naruto open your mouth. Dot, dot, let Kachan feed you say ah said demanded Hitomi, much to Naruto embracement. In the end of the day everyone have the happy faces. Naruto felt someone pull edge of his shirt, he turned around and saw Satsuki and Naruki were standing there. Ruki chan Sadu chan may I help you with something asked Naruto. Naruki and Satsuki both have slightly blushed at the nickname Naruto gave them. Yes, Ani sama dot dot can we talk to you, alone asked Naruki. Satsuki nodded in agreement. Fine, follow me said Naruto and indicate them to follow him. He lead them to garden where no one present there. Now Ruki chan Sadu chan dot dot anything wrong? You both can't tell me anything you know. Asked Naruto in very concerned tone. Naruki and Satsuki both blushed at the nickname not to mention his concerned voice melted them, not to mention his draconic presence. Actually we want to join your peerage. Naruki spoke, looking in his eyes. Satsuki nodded. How are you sure? Asked Naruto, not wanting to force them into something which they don't want to. Yes. Naruto-kun we both talk about it and decided to join if only you let us said Satsuki and smirked. She knew now Naruto won't turn her down. Dot. Of course. You both are welcome anytime, but before we proceed further I would like to reveal a secret and I want complete secrecy on this topic. Asked warned Naruto. Dot. Seeing his serious face Naruki decided to ask, what is it on Isama? You both know that I'm not a human right? Asked Naruto. Yeah, you are a dragon said Satsuki, then she looked at his face, which clearly showing there is something else too right Naruto-kun. There is something more Satu-chan which you both didn't know. What is it Ani sama Naruki decided to interfere. I'm not just a simple dragon I'm far more than that said Naruto, who now going to reveal his one of the most secret thing about him, I'm a dragon god stated Naruto. Naruki and Satsuki both froze for a minute. Ww what? B but how asked Naruki and Satsuki. Well I'll tell in future if Naruto started to explain he isn't ready for revealed everything, but Satsuki stopped him and spoke. We understand you aren't ready for this, and we completely respect your decision, but if you want to tell us any time. Our ears is all yours. Said Satsuki, who soon joined by Naruki. Hi, Ani-sama Satsuki-chan is right and we still want to join your peerage, said Naruki with determined face. Naruto nodded and complete the ritual make them both his pawns. So both of them joined your peerage, mate. Ask office seated on grass under a tree at the garden. 
Hi, office Haim they both joined, and I just told them I'm a dragon god, replied Naruto who lying on the grass, putting his head on office lap, who constantly playing with her mate's hair. So what you want to do with them? Naruto Koi. Ask office who enjoying, playing with her mate hair. I want to help them reach their true potential, also I want you research about their species and proper way to reach their true potential, so they will become strong in future, and as for now I'll ask Tiamat to give them basic dragon training. The wise choice mate I'll help them in more advanced training when they reach the level of high class dragon. It'll take one or two years for now dig in their species. You don't have to worry about it mate I've already sent my spies to gather information about their species. We'll get it in a day said office with a smile. Thanks office Haim I don't know what I'll do if I don't have you Haim said Naruto. Office giggle and lean towards his face and give a pick on his cheek and said probably messing up the things. Time skip, one week Okinawa. The sun was high as the sounds of crashing waves only added to the serene view that was the beach. The sky was blue with only a few clouds in sight. The sounds of people either talking or enjoying the weather at this moment gave the area of pleasant atmosphere. Currently, lying underneath a parasol, Amaterasu was lying on a beach chair, enjoying the gentle breeze, who wore a red bikini that revealed her grown body. It gotten the attention of several teenage males that kept getting a glance at her. When Naruto told her he isn't going South Carolina. She asked why. When explained the situation, she was pissed, beyond pissed. Naruto swear he never saw something that terrified. He somehow managed to clam her by telling her about Okinawa plan, which ended up her joining in. Lying next to him, underneath the same parasol, was Kuroka who was sleeping chest down on a towel. She wore a black bikini that revealed her grown body, while concealing both her ears and tails. When Kunu asked for permission for Okinawa trip, she immediately agreed and decided to tag along for the trip that made Kunu more than happy. They were watching children except Naruto, making a sandcastle. Where is my Atoto? Asked Amaterasu. He forget something in his room. So he went to grab it, said a feminine voice from behind. Amaterasu and Yasaka turned to see Luna and Hitomi were standing there, both wearing sundress and a straw hat. Though Luna Sama and Hitomi san greeted Yasaka. Meanwhile with Naruto. I can't believe, I forgot my goggles at my room now finally I get it I should go back to beach with that Naruto closed the door of his room and walked to the beach. He didn't pay attention to his surrounding just walking towards where he left his girls making the sandcastle. He accidentally bumped into someone, resulting both of them fell in the ground, more like beach. Naruto looked at the person he bumped into. The said person was a girl with black hair styled in a short bob cut and violet eyes. He stared at for full five minutes the girl doing the same when they realized what they were doing they both blushed and without thinking twice Naruto spoke. I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention to my surrounding. I it's okay I was doing the same, said the black hair girl. Naruto. Name's Naruto Uzumaki introduced Naruto. Sona my name is Sona Citri introduced the girl. Naruto looked at the person he bumped into. The said person was a girl with black hair styled in a short bob cut and violet eyes. He stared at for full five minutes the girl doing the same when they realized what they were doing they both blushed and without thinking twice Naruto spoke. I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention to my surrounding. It's okay I was doing the same said the black hair girl. Naruto. Name's Naruto Uzumaki introduced Naruto. Sona my name is Sona Citri introduced the girl. Naruto closely examined the girl, the girl who he bumped into, the one who introduced herself as Sona Citri was wearing a blue strapless two-piece swimsuit. Wait did she say Citri the Citri clan, one of the remaining 33 devil clans of the 72 pillars. Why is a member of the Citri clan here? Thought Naruto, still looking at her. When Sona caught, he was still looking at her she blushed, but before she could say anything or he asked anything they were distracted when they heard a feminine voice from behind. So tan, so tan. Sona didn't need to turn around as she knew who was calling her and signed, while Naruto looked towards the source of the voice and caught the teenage version of Sona without any glasses. Here you are so tan one e chan was so depressed when she didn't find you I was about to call entire guards, a army perhaps, to look for you she said, and then she looked towards the person her so tan talking. And found a cute adorable boy with crimson hair with shining gold eyes. Before Sona could reply, she spoke again. Oh. My dot dot so tan gotta be o y f r i e n d said teased sir awful cheerfully, making Sona's face completely red. One e sama. It's not like that dot dot i j just w we just get to know each other's name, said a red face Sona. Naruto didn't know what to feel, but nodded lastly. Uh, is that so? Anyway I'm Sona's one e chan sir awful s i t r i. Seraphal said in a cute childish voice. Sona just signed, knowing her one Isama behavior. Naruto found her behavior cute and thought aloud, you are Kawei Seraphal san, and blink did I just said that. Seraphal had a star in her eyes, finding another true fan of her. Oh. Thank you um. 
I didn't get your name actually said Seraphil, while having curious expressions when she asked his name. Because I never give any in fact I just introduced myself to Sona before you came anyway, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. Setter introduced Naruto himself with a smile which caught Seraphil off guard. Uzumaki he said. Was he related to them thought Seraphil, but before she asked anything. Another feminine voice interrupt them. Naruto-chan. Where are you? Here you are Naruto-chan said a feminine voice. The trio looked towards the voice and they had mixed reactions. Naruto already knew who she was and how he liked her company. Surfol stared at her in disbelief. She isn't recovered from the Uzumaki bomb now she. Why? She is here, and she used a nickname for Naruto, she must be close to him, thought Seraphil still with disbelieving eyes. Wow. Her power is so great. Even surpassing one Isama. She is like Sun who is she? And she used a nickname for Naruto-kun must be his one Isama thought Sona, still amazed by the aura she was radiating. one chan Ami one chan I was just talking with them said Naruto while pointing towards Citrus. The Madras who just looked at them and immediately identified them. She usually hate devil, but when she caught Seraphil she smiled, after all she may be devil, but a different one than the most of greedy ones. Looks like a Toto already making friends with a devil king. one chan did he just said that and to a Madarasu no less Yuzumaka and she really close, then here I told Serzich as many times to make a better relationship with other factions, but he always said let other factions make a move, first thought Seraphil. I knew it. His one Isama but she is powerful. That mean Naruto become powerful in future too. Thought Sona with dreamy face. Greetings Lady Leviathan, Arisitri, said a Madarasu in polite tone. Naruto have shocked expressions on his face when his one Ichan mentioned Leviathan, but remember his history teaching and Devil Civil War, and immediately recognized Seraphil as Devil King Seraphil Leviathan. H-E-L-L-O Lady Amaterasu greet Seraphil between her childish and polite tone. Did she said Amaterasu? As one of top 10 strongest being. And Naruto-kun called her one Ichan. Who are you Naruto? Thought Sona, looking at Amaterasu, but she decided to greet her after all she is the heiress of House of Citri, and it didn't look good if she didn't greet insult someone like Amaterasu. Greetings Lady Amaterasu-sama greeted Sona politely. Ah. A well-mannered girl she must take after you Seraphil compliment Amaterasu, while Seraphil giggled and Sona blushed. What are you doing Amaterasu-san? Asked a very curious Seraphil. The spending quality time with my little Atoto maybe he'll add me in his harem in future, said Amaterasu, while saying last part in teasing tone. Which got her immediate reaction from Naruto who blushed redder than his crimson hair. One Ichan exclaimed Naruto in embracement. The Amaterasu just giggled. Serafo looked at them with star in her eyes. While Sona just stared at them with shocked expressions. And I joined too? Asked Serafo. Much to Sona embracement. One Isama this time the voice come from Sona. And this time Seraphil to giggled. Of course Seraphil said a very excited Amaterasu. Why 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 I e replied Seraphil in very childish behavior. One each and Sama exclaimed Naruto and Sona in unison. This time both Seraphil and Amaterasu both giggled. Anyway how about join us Seraphil? Asked Amaterasu. Of course. Amaterasu sa and we'd love to said Seraphil, to which Sona nodded while looking at Naruto. Naruto just smiled. Let's go so Chan you'd love to meet others, exclaimed Naruto as he hold her hand run towards others, completely missing a blushing face of Sona. While Amaterasu and Seraphil giggled again. He is holding my hand. Thought Sona. Here we are so Chan said Naruto that brought back Sona from her dreamland. She found herself looking towards seven girls. Naruto found this awkward, so he decided to introduce Sona to others since he brought her dot. Hey girls. Meet Sona. Our new friend. And Sona meet Karumi while pointing towards the blonde girl, Valen while pointing towards the silver hair girl, Naruki pointed towards another blonde, Satusuki while pointing towards the raven hair girl, Kunu while pointing towards the last blonde. Diamat while pointing towards the deep blue hair girl in my office while pointing at midnight hair girl. Which caught Sona completely off guard. Kunu as princess of Kyoto. Tiamat the chaos karma dragon. And office as infinity dragon god. And he said my office. And he is still alive what is in the world going on here. And each of them radiating the aura of ultimate class. How? Thought Sona dot, but she decided to drop it and introduced herself. Hello, I'm Sona Citri. Nice to meet you greeted Sona with a small bow, in a pure-blooded manner. You must be thinking about us and yes, we live together if that's you were thinking said a very amused team at dot. And if you think asking any of us joining your peerage as you mentioned yourself Citri then we politely decline since we are off limits said Valen not wanting to get Sona hope high, since Sona can easily tell they are powerful very powerful indeed. First Sona disappointed but nodded nevertheless dot. I understand. Said Sona. 
Isaka and Luna were discussing about the whole trip and making plan for dinner when they were interrupted by third voice. Look who I found here Yasaka chan Luna-chan said a feminine voice which happened to be Amaterasu's. Both of them first looked towards Amaterasu and then the girl next to her. It took a couple of seconds before they recognized the Devil King. Isaka-san, Luna-san it's pleasure to meet you again greeted Serafal politely. Ah Serafal-san indeed it's a pleasure. Greeted Luna back. Yusaka nodded and asked, what are you doing here Serafal? She decided to take her little sister Sona here, where her little sister bump into Naruto, and where I found her making friend with Naruto. This replied come from Amaterasu, Serafal just nodded. Naruto name caught Luna off guard. She eyed Serafal and said in very threatening clam tone, if you dare to harm my cute little grandson or trying to add him in your peerage, you'll find yourself very complicated situation devil king or not. Serafal swallowed nervously while Yasaka nodded in agreement, in last few months, Yasaka started to treat Naruto as her own son which she never had. I wouldn't dare as he carry the name of Yuzumakis, and if he related to you then trust me no one in devil faction going to move against him assured Serafal. And so to make a friend other than that spoiled little princess she muttered last part to herself, but Luna and Yasaka heard it clearly, but decided to ask it later. Don't worry Naruto make her comfortable and he has lots of friends, so don't worry as he now is going introducing them to her, so your little sister is going to make lots of friends, and ladies it's summer break and we here to have fun mind if Serafal and little sister join us. I assured you she won't harm Naruto-chan said Amaterasu. Then okay with us anyway we are making special plan for dinner. Come join us, said Yusaka with a smile, and they started to plan the evening. Sir Fold caught sight of Sona smiling and talking with Ice and his friends, first she smiled and then froze when she looked at Ice's friends. Every one of them radiating the aura of ultimate class of not higher than that of, except a certain blonde princess, she paled when she saw Tiamat and Office together, talking with them. She knew both dragons are friends, but she never see them together, even seeing infinite dragon god, and lived to tell a tale that is completely unheard of. Is she Office? Asked Serafal with disbelief eyes. Amaterasu giggled. Yusaka signed, knowing where the upcoming conversation will go, but fortunately it is Luna who replied. Yes the very same. Is it not a problem I guess. Serafal looked at her like she'd grown a second head, the very same woman who threatened her if she did anything to her grandson. Yusaka read her facial expressions and replied before anyone interrupt. Office and Ice are close very close, and don't worry she won't harm her mate. And if you are thinking Officer Tiamat will harm anyone, then I like disappoint you that they won't do anything like that which I Amaterasu then looked at Luna and Yusaka, both of them nodded which brought smile on Amaterasu's face, and she continue I mean we can guarantee that. Replied Amaterasu with a serious face. And I hope this discussion will not made public said Yusaka in tone that she won't take no in answer. Serafal just shook her head and said no. I won't inform higher up, but still use Amakis, Kyoto, Shinto gods, Office and Tiamat working together can cause an uproar in Underworld, not to mention rest of their friends. That's my Isis doing said Amaterasu and giggle. Yes he has a very unique way to bond people together. Muttered Yusaka in low voice, looking at her daughter who was holding Isis' hand. Where are we going Bachan? Asked a very excited as he was told they were going to have special dinner. Which both Serafal and Sona joining them. Kayan simply told that Serafal is old friend of Amaterasu, and she is here with her little sister for summer. Which they agreed. But Max knew who she actually is so Luna told him entire conversation, so he agreed in the end with a condition of keeping close eye to her. Naruto-chan at secret replied a very amused Luna. Naruto pouted while making a cute position which rest of ladies found Kawei and fought their urge to yell Kawei dot dot. Suddenly Naruto got in devilish plan and smirked widely. Luna instantly caught his smirk, and warning bells went off in the Luna's mind. Dot. Dot Naruto raised his arms in front of his mother with a lost puppy look on his face. That make him too much adorable in ladies' eyes. Hitomi bent down to lift Naruto into her arms and placed her comfortably on his hips. Hitomi loved it when Naruto did that to her, her little Naruto is everything. Luna signed as she knew if Naruto asked her mother now, she'll answer anything and everything. Mom, I'm hungry. Naruto said with a puppy look. Don't worry my Sachi we are about to reach beach where we plan an open air dinner near the beach so we can admire its beauty while having dinner. I'm 100% sure you gonna like it said Hitomi, who was completely busy and adoring her little Sachi. Naruto placed his head on her shoulder and smiled while asking, can we have ice cream after that Kachan? Of course. We can replied Hitomi as she gave a little peek at his cheek. Naruki Satusuki, Sona and Serafal has the surprised face. They never saw thought Naruto will ever behave like that. Max chuckled, seeing their surprised, disbelieving, and astonished faces. 
Don't worry you all just saw one of his mood swings dot dot, which only limited to his mother, then he looked at his grandson and said, you, my grandson, are an imp. Naruto beamed. I know. Everyone laughed except Hitomi, who was still busy and mothering her Sachi Sachi mean son. Soon they reached a place near the beach where they found a round table with many chairs around it and two waiters around it. This is Yuzumaki, I presume? Asked one of them. Luna came forward and said yes gentlemen, I booked today special dinner for my family and friends, I think everything is ready or we aren't too early or late. Second waiter nodded and said, no ma'am you are on right time and yes everything is ready ma'am. Luna and rest of them seated. Dot. Wow this looks like advanced version of open air dinner as we added beach said Naruto, admiring the beauty around. I told you Sachi. We are about to reach here and you gonna like it, said Hitomi lifting her son onto her lap. I love it mum. Said Naruto happily as he adjusted himself on his mother lap. Glad to hear said Hitomi while stroking his hair. It is the first time I saw him act like that said Naruki while looking at Naruto and their mother. Well his mood swings like that, he act like cute and adorable thing around his mother said Kurumi with a smile. Wait until you see how he behave in a battle duel training the amount of concentration, seriousness, focus, and determination he shows, is actually and matured adults could show. And when it comes to intelligence and battle strategic, he is a genius, a prodigy in simply language, surpassing everyone I know heck even my own mother said Kunu. While watching interactions between a mother and a son. Which caught everyone attention except adults who were busy on their conversation. Really? Asked a very surprised looking Satusuki. Kunu nodded. As expected from my mate, my Naruto-chan office stated with a half smile. Oh you are, playfully corrected Tiamat. Mate. Wait. You mean started Kunu, but before she can finish Tiamat replied, bingo office mark him already, and I'm planning to do same. Bali looking at Tiamat and then office with disbelieving looks. Kunu blushed redder that put Naruto's hair in shame. Well rest of girls have confusing and curious face except Sona as she knew what mate means in certain races. Mate mean husband or wife dot in simply language Naruto and office are already married in Dragonic Law. Tiamat told them bluntly when she saw confusing expressions on girls' faces. All girls except Office and Tiamat has jaw hanging on ground. All of them looked at Office to deny it, but when she blushed it confirmed what they just heard is true. When Office heard married, she blushed which confirmed what Tiamat said to rest to girls. But before any girls comment, Tiamat also added, and she is willing to share, so Naruto can have an harem, and I'm planning to join in future. You mean Kurumi started. We can continued Kunu. Also continued Vali with a red face. Marry him finished Naruki and Satusuki in unison. Of course. You all can as I already approved you all but make sure he stay away from any girl who isn't good for his health and wealth is that clear. Stated office with an authority voice. To which every girl's nodded. Isn't good for health and wealth. Asked Naruki with a confusing tone. The Amat signed and spoke, she meant any gold digger or any woman want him for use his power for her personal gain, Naruki eyes widened in realization. Don't worry. We'll be damned if we let something happen like that Kurumi said to make her claim. Yes, she is right, and don't worry I'll kill them myself off as stated simply. Sona who was listening the entire conversation, paled at the thought of a poor girl facing warth of infinity dragon god. Soon the dinner was over, and Naruto and girls went for ice cream with his mother, while the rest of them decided to walk around the beach. Arigato Koch and for the ice cream you're the best beamed Naruto while taking a bite to his chocolate ice cream. Office also took chocolate ice cream as she had seen her mate eating before. Bull Kurumi and Kunu took strawberry, Vali, Naruto and Tiamat took orange and lastly Satusuki and Sona took vanilla. Welcome Sachi said Hitomi with a smile aw. Oh, isn't Sachi gonna share with his kacha and added Hitomi. Naruto looked at his mum and simply showing his chocolate ice cream to his mum and spoke here kacha and. Have a bit cheerfully replied Naruto which Hitomi found kawaii and that's earned him a peek on his cheek. Naruto and rest of them returning back to their rooms. Since Yuzumaki already a manor there, they didn't have to book any hotel rooms there and manor was quite large, so everyone got their own room. But even after getting a separate room like their home didn't budge the girls they simple took a room, but decided to sleep at Naruto's room, continuing their normal life. The day's morning were special to everyone as they planned to visit Shiriho Castle, Cape Manzamo, and Okinawa Churami Aquarium at last. Luna also invited Serafal and Sona, almost an hour early to breakfast, so she can talk about today's plan with them, as Amaterasu insisted to invite them in every trip. Luna, Hitomi and Amaterasu were discussing about today's program with every details, while Max and Kai were discussing their own stuff. I think kids were enjoying more that they can enjoy at South Carolina. Stated Kai. Max nodded in agreement and said, you can say so not only kids, but we are enjoying this too. Yes. You can say so it's been really a while we go out huh? 
asked Kai while remembering the last time he go out with his parents. Yes it is. And if isn't for Naruto stated Max. He became lifeline for the family especially for his Kachan and Lunachan, starting to spoil him too. As you didn't spoiled him you spoiled him as much as they did. I got only one grandson, complained Max which to Kai just chuckled at his father ridiculous excuse. Suddenly they were interrupted as a household servant came and said, Luna-sama, Hitomi-sama, our guest Seraphol-sama and Sona-sama arrived. Send them and ordered Luna. After two mins they arrived at leaving room. Luna saw them coming and greeted them. Ah. Seraphol and little Sona-chan good morning, come seat with us we were discussing today's program said invited Luna. Seraphol nodded and seated next to Amaterasu, while Sona decided to stand behind her. Amaterasu saw her and spoke with a smile Sona-chan why don't you go upstairs and get Naruto and others, they probably awake now. Yes so Tan go greet your future husband a very good morning teased Seraphil in a very low voice, so only Sona could hear. Hearing it makes Sona face redder than tomato. She didn't know if she feel embracement for calling her so Tan or her future husband or to greet Naruto-kun in the morning. In the end she decided it's better to join them since she can't interfere in adults matter. Sona standing in front of Naruto Kun room, still thinking how he gonna react after seeing her. She gave her thinking a pause and knock his door twice. She didn't get any reply, so she knocked twice again. But still she didn't get any reply, so she gave a push to door and found that door was open. She knocked again, but again got no reply. So she decided to enter his room. She pushed the door and door was now completely open. And a shocked face Sona standing there. Sona knew what they were talking about yesterday night at dinner table, but didn't expect to see this type of situation this earlier. She knew she'll see this type of situation but this early. In front of her a bed bigger than the extra king size bed must be custom made she thought. That didn't the reason of her shock. But in the bed, Naruto was laying middle of the bed with the girl she met last night. Kunu on his left side while using his hand as her pillow, not to mention in her true form. On his right side office was sleeping while using right hand as her pillow. At least she was glad that office wasn't sleeping in her true form. She started to doubt that was she the same office she heard about and rest of girls also find a place on his bed and sleeping peacefully. She didn't know what to feel. On the first hand she was blushing madly at what she was seeing, but on the other hand, she felt little bit jealousy to be left out and missed the chance to sleep with Naruto-kun. She so caught on her thinking that she completely missed that Naruto was starting to awake. When Naruto complete awoke, first thing he saw was the girls around him which didn't surprise him. For him, it's normal morning with the addition of Kunu. And it also didn't surprise him a bit, since whenever Kunu came for sleepover, she chose to sleep with him. But when he looked at the door he found Sona was standing there with her mouth open and a very shocked face. He just rubbed his head in confused manner at her expression and said, Good morning So-chan, it's good to see you again greeted Naruto still laying on his bed to Sona that brought her back to her conscious. Naruto voice awoke Kunu, who was now starting to awake. Sona decided to greet him back and tried her best to hide her blushing face, Aon Ol Lunasama has sent me to get you another downstairs. Said Sona while compassing herself. Sounds like Bachan said Naruto, and before he could finish his sentence Kunu voice interrupted him, who was half awake now. Five minutes more Naruto Koi mumbled Kunu and snuggled deeper into him. Now resting her head on his chest. Naruto just patted on her back, completely missing the bright red face of Sona, who started to play with her finger. Hell botch Ann, we'll be downstairs within half an hour said Naruto before starting to awake others. So we are going to visit these places, today asked a very cheerful devil king Leviathan. Of Sarah. I'm sure Sona will like these places, replied Amaterasu with a bright smile. And Sona really gets along with each other. Anyway Seraphil, Naruto birthday is on next month I'm inviting you to his birthday party. You must come with Sona-chan she like it dot invited Hitomi. Amaterasu nodded in agreement. M.O.U. Naruto-chan birthday is on next month already. I should get a better gift for him T.H.E.N. Seraphil replied in Seraphil way. Where is Sona-chan anyway? Asked Yusaka. Oh. I sent her upstairs to get Naruto and others answered Luna. Before she could say anything she found bright red face Sona was walking towards them. Hello. Sona-chan. Where is Naruto and others? Asked Luna. Hitomi, Yusaka Amaterasu and Seraphil looked at her waiting for her reply with a confused expressions for her bright red face. He just awoke up and said he'll downstairs with others within half an hour. Answered Sona, still with red face. So that's why your face is red, stated Yusaka. She knew very well about Naruto's sleeping situation after all he came for sleepover at Yusaka Manor for six to seven times a month. Hitomi, Luna and Amaterasu caught what she was talking about. Hitomi and Luna signed and Amaterasu giggled. Well Seraphil asked with confused expressions, I didn't get it. 
Well, Sarah, they all sleep together, Amaterasu told her bluntly. Sarah Folt blinked twice before the understanding of her words hit her. I see. She then looked at Sona who still have little pink blush in her cheek and asked in teasing manner, is someone jealous for not getting chance to sleep with Naruto-chan? Little pink blush turned back into reddish tomato color. One Isama shouted Sona in embracement. Soon Naruto and girls joined them. Naruto found them on breakfast table. He greeted them morning. I'm presuming that you already made today's plan Bachan. Asked Naruto seating himself on a chair across his Bachan. Good morning Ka-san said Kunu. Morning my little princess said Yusaka lifting her daughter onto her lap. Rest of girls also find their seat and adjusted themselves on their chairs. We decided to visit Shuriho Castle today how's that sound asked Luna to Naruto. Tsugoi Bachan. The 11th World Heritage Site Shuriho Castle. Exclaimed Naruto. The 11th World Heritage Site. Ask a very curious Naruki dot. Shuriho Castle served as the proud and dignified center of Ryukyu Kingdom and its politics, foreign affairs and culture. With architectural influences from both China and Japan, the castle shows its exceptional cultural and historical values in its unique stonework and architectural design. Thus, Shuriho was designated as a World Heritage Site in December of 2000, the 11th World Heritage Site within Japan, surprisingly reply come from Sona. Naruto just nodded to confirm what she said. We are also planning to visit Cape Manzamo, informed Hitomi. Naruto's eyes widened at that. The Cape Manzamo? I always wanted to see the sunset from there said a very excited Naruto. Is there anything special at sunset from there asked Vali. Indeed it is due to its location, Cape Manzamo is facing the open East China Sea to the west. This makes it a very popular spot on Okinawa for viewing the sunset. Replied Naruto. Then we are going to watch sunset from there confirmed Hitomi with a smile. Later that night. Naruto find himself seated in sofa while drinking orange juice. Did you enjoy it today, honey? Asked Hitomi while playfully rub his hair. Hi. Kachan I took lots of photos too said Naruto as he started to photos on his camera. Where are others, office Heim? Asked Naruto as only his mother and office in the living room with him. Well your grandfather and father were booking for some event for Tomro. Yusaka, Amaterasu and Serafal went for shopping as Amaterasu caught a sight of a good shopping mall nearby. As for your grandmother and rest of girls, I don't know said Hitomi and smiled as she saw the photo of yesterday dinner in which Naruto seated on her lap and she was feeding him. Bachan and rest of girls are planning for open air dinner at our garden, so they are now at garden, planning for our dinner off as simply stated and got off from her chair and placed herself on Naruto lap. Hitomi cooed at the cute sight. And since she has camera on her, she captured the moment on her camera. So how is it looks like, girls? Asked Luna as she finishes the preparation. Wow granny it looks amazing, exclaimed Naruki as she looked at the preparation. What is it called Bachan? Asked Kurumi as she can guess that it must be a themed dinner. What do you mean, Kurumi-chan? Asked Tiamat as she raised her both eyebrows. Tiamat-san, Kurumi-chan wants to know if it is a themed dinner or not. But if you ask me it surely looks like one answered Valen. Satuski and Kurumi nodded in agreement. You both are quite right dear, it is a themed dinner it's called elegant summer dinner said a very amused Luna as seven years old girl caught the basic of dinner arrangement. The Madarasu said I think that will be enough for today said Yusaka in a very irritated tone, carrying four bags full of clothes and different fashionable items. Oh. Come on Yusaka-chan I have yet to get eleventh gift for Naruto's birthday, replied a Madarasu with a pout. While Serafal checking the new magical outfit she got for Sona and herself. Eleventh. Just how many gifts you plan to give Naruto on his birthday? Asked Yusaka with disbelief look. That's easy to answer. Double the number of present a Toto will get on his B-I-R-T-H-D-A-Y cheerfully replied Amaterasu. Yusaka fasciplant. That's a very good goal Amaterasu-chan commented Serafal. Thank you Sera. You're the only one who can understand me said Amaterasu with a fake mock and hurt tone. Yusaka just rolled her eyes. Of course. I laughed or all I'm a one chan too, replied Serafal with a serious determined face. Yusaka could swear it's the first time she saw Serafal's serious face. She didn't know this woman can be serious at all, and a determined one no less. I think it's a one chan thing thought Yusaka as she was completely clueless at what was happening. So all the preparation for Tomro has been made? Asked confirmed Max Dot. Yes. Two san it has you don't need to worry. Children gonna enjoy it, confirmed assured Kai. Anyway how's your sister-in-law? Did doctor say anything about her condition? Asked Max while drinking tea. Unfortunately no. She is still in coma. And showing no sign to recover. Said Kai and signed. Max frowned and said, get the best doctors from the world Kai Kurumi-chan growing up without her is not good, I know you, and Hitomi-chan will always be there for her, but still. 
I know what you want to say Tao-san, and I understand completely and it isn't for Naruto-chan, I don't know how to get Kurumi-chan out of her depression, still now she is always close to him, fear of losing him, and be by his side as he does the same as always standing with her, like the whole summer camp issue happened at dinner table. She stood for him there, and he didn't disappoint her and did the same said Kai with a smile, remembering the whole drama at dinner table and don't worry. I'm already in contact with a specialist. That's good to know. Anyway Naruto birthday is next month I think we make him heir of the house, I know he already is what I mean is make it official what do you say, asked Max with a serious face he knew Kai won't disagree with him, but making it official means more paperwork for Kai. Surprisingly Kai nodded and said, I was thinking the same thing, Tao-san. It's time to make it official. Max nodded with a satisfying smile and spoke when are we returning back to Kyoto. In four days Tao-san, why? Replied Kai with a question also raised his eyebrow while saying last part. Aren't we going to organize a business party too? Answered Max as he raised both of his eyebrows. I blinked and signed heavily, knowing too well as when they introduce Naruto as heir to the house, many things will be changed in his life. Time skip. Day of return. So it's a goodbye then. Asked Sona in very low tone that only Naruto-chan heard while looking downwards. Naruto looked at her for a moment before tackled her in a warm hug while whispering something in her ear that made her giggle. Seraphal looking at her baby sister with warm smile. When she planned the trip, she never thought this trip turned out this way, and she was glad that it turned out this way. Sona giggled much to the Seraphal shock and delight, who had never heard her cute little sister giggle before. Oh well. So Chan. You heard me do you really think it's a goodbye? Here I thought you'll still in contact with me and rest of us. Whispered Naruto with mock hurt tone. Sona giggled. Naruto broke the embrace much to her disappointment and other girls' delight. I going to miss you all, you all were my closest best friend, said Sona sadly. Especially you Naruto-kun. What do you mean by were? We are still best friends and noting going to change that, spoke Kurumi. Here this is for your Sona-chan, said Valen as she handed a magical book advanced dark magic of water and ice. To non-supernatural beings like Naruto's parents, it's like an old story book featuring prince and princess tale. But a supernatural being could see what it actually is. And not to forget my birthday is next month aren't you coming to So-chan? Of course you bet. Anyway you didn't tell me what you want on your birthday. Asked Sona in a cheerful tone, who was completely acting 180 degree to her original personality, much to her one Isama joy. Ah. You're just fine, Naruto replied nonchalantly. Sona blinked once and twice and then a third time as she processed what he had said, before her cheeks flared an alarming shade of crimson, she wasn't sure that she could go any redder than this. What D did you just say? Stuttered Sona nervously, breaking the embrace. Ah you. I want you to come I know as a heiress of House of Citri you'll be busy said Naruto, but before he could finish, Sona evolved him in a tight embrace. Aka. I'll never miss it for anything, Naruto-kun said Sona as she then did something that surprised everyone, especially Naruto, she gave him a soft but gentle kiss on his left cheek. When Seraphal saw this she was surprised at first like the rest, but that turned quickly to a smile, especially when Sona moved away and Naruto began to blush red from what she had done. Seraphal even giggled like a schoolgirl when she saw that her baby sister was now as red as a cherry from what she had done and had her head down trying to hide it. It seems that Sona has a little crush on Naruto thought Seraphal as she giggled again and thought how cute the two would be if they got together. The office looked surprised for a moment then covered it with a perfect emotionless mask. Diamat has a mischievous smile. Garumi and Kunu were now glaring daggers at them. Naruki was now a completely blushing mess. Balan and Satuski were trying so hard to compose themselves, but still a little pink blush could be seen on their faces. Adults were equally surprised but then smiled. After that Naruto and the others started to walk away as they did the Seraphal and Sona waved goodbye to them. Seraphal suddenly turned her head slightly and spoke to her little sister, should I start planning the wedding? Wani-chan cried an embarrassed Sona as her Wani-sama laughed at the young girl's bright red face.